talking bollocks! Yes! I'm back, loud and lovely folks, right in your ears. It is me, your host, Howard H. Smith, erstwhile stand-up comedian um, as Keith Platt, professional Yorkshireman. Get to keithplatt.co.uk, check that shit out. Also, front singer of... Re- front singer, already fucked up, get in. That's got to be a record. 35 seconds, brilliant, what a dick. Um, also, singer of rebooted... Uh, what well, singer, vocalist, vocalist, front man, person in, um, in Acid Rain... Um, reactivated, rebooted, um, UK thrash band acidrain.co.uk. That's the website, Acid Rain Thrash on Facebook, Twitter, um, also to- Talking Bollocks on Facebook, Twitter. Everything, everything's on Twitter, everything's on Facebook, everything's on a website somewhere. And make sure you have subscribed to this podcast so you get all the goodies every month. There you go. So that's me welcoming you back. If it's your first time, where the fuck have you been? What what have you been doing with your life? What are you... Really? really? This is the first one? Stop right now. Go back. Listen to the other fucking how many there is. Then come back to this, okay? Or just hang around. It's cool to have you here. Thanks for popping by. Um, and um, uh, obviously, welcome back, bollockers. Welcome back to another bollo cast. Here we are, live at uh, Talking Bollocks Towers. Um, quite a lot been going on, actually. Uh, I've got a lot to get through this month. Um, and unfortunately, I wanted to play you a song from the new Dem- Denna Sherman um, album. That, however, is not going to be possible because the songs aren't public yet. I have heard it. It is old school lovely. So uh, please bear that in mind. Um, and there is going to be a old school, new school special coming up very soon. So, um, yeah, I, and lots of specials. If you're listening to this and think, wow, it's, it's been a while since um, I had that twat shouting at me. Um, you, Well, yeah, it does feel like that. It's, this one's a little later this month because I've been busy, 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 busy with um with acid rain with stand up i mean last night i um i played the the very last show at a, car, a, a, a um, a club called the Foxgrove out in Beckenham. Their last ever show. I was their last ever act um, to perform at that hallowed venue. Um, so a big shout out to everybody there. Um, and I, I was really sad. It was a fucking awesome show. Really, even though I say so myself. Um, no, I mean, I, I wasn't just me. There was obviously a lot of comics on, and it was an awesome show. I got to close. Um, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Um, I got to close, and um, and it was it was just awesome. So, um, and it, but also tinged with sadness. And uh, I know it's not often, I, not that often, that I mention comedy on the podcast. But um, uh, you know, I kind of felt like uh, it was appropriate because um, it, whether it's metal or whether it's comedy or whatever, we seem to be losing um, venues at an, an alarming rate. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I kind of just wanted to mention it because it was last night. And um, yeah, anyway. Moving fucking on. I did mention the old school, new school special coming up. Um, yes, it's been a while since uh, since you had me shouting at you, but boy, is it going to be worth the wait. You've got this podcast here, which I'm sure you've already noticed is not one of the um, the uh, big three hour motherfuckers that you guys have been coming that you become used to. <coughs> Excuse me. However, there is. Um, going to be an Acid Rain special coming out um, not long after this, so hard on the heels of this is going to be an Acid Rain one-on-one, this time with Pete D, bass player in Acid Rain, and also guitarist and frontman of Cremated. What a busy guy. Um, and um, there's also going to be a writer's special coming out, uh, hard on the heels of the Acid Rain special. So yeah, that's right, two specials in one month, including this podcast, equals three podcasts in one month. So worth the wait, I'm sure you'd agree. Um, the writer's special is going to be awesome. It it features DX Ferris, writer of um, two awesome Slayer books, um, Slayer 66 and Two Thirds, The Jeff and Dave Years, and also he did uh, Rain in Blood 33 and a Third, which is um, a, a, um, a series of books that are all dedicated to classic albums. Um, 33 and a Third, he wrote the, um, the Slayer um, account of that. And there's gonna, also going to be coming up a, a Metallica Black Album special, because um, there is a 33 and a third book about the making of the Black Album coming out. Um, it's very relevant and very recent. He has spoken to, I mean, he's interviewed everybody very recently about the album. So you might have heard all and seen all of the, the making ofs before, but this one will be more in-depth. And that's going to be a special coming up soon as well. So lots of fucking specials. But every one of these goddamn podcasts is special, is it not? Um so that that concludes me fucking selling my wares and selling the podcast 
um, uh, and all future editions. Let's get on with this one, and let's roll on with um, um, well, f straight up. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring the tone down a bit, um, and that was in case you don't know, but I'm sure most of you will. Um, uh, Martin Kiddy Kearns, um, who was bolt thrower's drummer um, twice, and uh, was their was their current drummer. Sorry, drummer um, died on September the fourteenth, aged thirty-eight, um, and uh, you know, unexpectedly, no one knew it was coming. Um, they were about to tour for the first time since nineteen ninety-three. Um, uh, well, at least Australian tour, anyway. And um, yeah, it, it it just came out of nowhere. I I don't know bolt, bolt thrower. I don't know any of the people involved. But what I do know is that. Um, in the metal community, we um, we stick together, and when you hear things like that, it's just um, it's just terrible. I mean, bearing in mind, and you know, no disrespect to Lemmy, who would appear to be certainly aiming for dying on stage. Um, it does put everything into perspective, really. Um, you know, there's a huge outpouring of of, of sympathy and love um, for Lemmy as he very publicly um, uh, dies. Frankly, there's no other way of putting it. And I did see a clip of the Austin, Texas. Um, show on YouTube, and I think everybody regular listeners know my my views on Lemmy. I'm not a big fan, um, and and that's you know musically and 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 just see I've, I've never met the guy, but on a personal level, I've, you know, what can I say? Uh, what are the 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 just my general impression? I'm not I, I'm not a fan. I know I'm, that's somehow um, fucking illegal in metal, and he's a bit like the fucking queen mother of of metal. You're not supposed to say anything bad about Lemmy, but. Um, I haven't really got anything good to say, so. Um, but even so, I watched the clip of uh, Austin, him at Austin, Texas, and it was fucking painful. It really was. It was horrible to see. I mean, you know, I, I might not particularly like the guy, but I'm not. I'm not a complete cunt. I mean, when you see somebody in that much distress, it is. It is horrible. By the same token, I also do think you should probably not be fucking gigging and taking people's money and playing three songs. Um, now, I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's a money thing. I'm not saying he's ripping anybody off. But I think you. You do have to go. Hang on. Um, you know, I'm not going to be able to play the full show. You just got to be. There's. <sighs> You know, uh, there's one camp going, oh, yeah, but he's Lemmy, in it. He's just saying, fuck it. Like, you know, fuck it. Fuck everything. I'm just going to plough on. Yeah, well, ploughing on is not three songs. Um, and that doesn't really help anyone. It's certainly not helping him. I mean, he's, you know, comes back on stage on a cane looking like he's like 800, like Skeletor from one of the old He-Man cartoons and apologising. And apologising is all very well. Um, and I'm sure it's the last time that a, a lot of people in that crowd will ever see him. And is that the way you want to remember? Is that the way you want to go out? Um, but even even so, I'm, I'm I'm rambling on about Lemmy, and I don't mean to. But like I said, I saw the footage; it was ho it was horrible, and it, like uh, you know, I don't don't wish ill on anybody. Um, but it certainly does make you think that a 38 year old drummer drops dead, um, and um, it receives very little coverage compared to Lemmy stumbling around. I just think, and that's not Lemmy's fault, and that's just the way media works. But it's just uh, incredibly sad. So my heart goes out and um, to everybody in the bolt thrower camp, and um, I hope things um, well. I hope get through to it. Go. You know, get through it soon and find a new drummer and plough on. But just don't try nicking our drummer, all right? Um, so, um, moving on. I did say old school, new school at the beginning. There's going to be a special coming up. There is. Um, and to let you in on that, the second half of the, well, the new school part of that will be probably me be interviewing um, Shrapnel on the road. Yeah, you're going to hear uh, you're going to hear some shit on the road. Um, and it, I might do a kind of bit of an acid rain special with us um, on that one as well, and just sort of like reporting. And I'm I'm not sure. You just you know just keep checking your podcasts. Uh, sorry, keep checking your apps, um, and uh, you know you'll you'll see whatever's in there is in there. Anyway, moving briefly. Sorry, briefly, swiftly on um, Slayer, Repentless, Awesome. Okay, three words: Slayer, Repentless awesome loving it absolutely loving the repentless video i think the song repentless is a slayer classic or very close to it um i think it's their best work for a long time i know a lot of people have been um uh, you know they, i i just want to get one thing clear right there's a lot of reviews and there would appear to be a lot of people who who basically their stance is slayer shouldn't have made this album well, no dave no jeff no slayer Therefore, they review the album from the standpoint of this shouldn't exist, so I'm going to tear it down anyway. Um, and and as you know, that's not that's not my particular point of view. 
but I just think it's sad that um, maybe some people aren't giving it the giving them the respect they're due because they don't think that it should be out. Well, it is out, and as you'll hear with my interview with DX Ferris um, uh, about Slayer, um, you know, <laughs> Dave isn't in the band because Dave fucked up. That's his problem. So if we look at if, if we go and and that will all be revealed. So you know, make sure you download that and listen to it. Um, uh, it's it's awesome. It's it's fucking awesome. The video is brilliant. It's certainly uh, it's certainly. <laughs> giving a nod to Metallica and going, no, this is how you make a video based in a prison, lads. This is how it's done. And fuck me, it is how it's done. Um, and, I mean, Danny Trejo from, uh, well, from loads of films, but mainly Dust Till Dawn. I mean, uh, well, no, not that. He was in Heat as well. Fucking awesome, man. Um, he's brilliant in that. Um, and he's brilliant in um, in the slave. And, and anyway, the album is is brilliant. Absolutely love it. If anybody out there is um, is is even half in, half out the bag on that one, climb all the way in. It is, um, in my opinion, it's a classic. It's on uh, it's on solid. It's on solid rotation on uh, the Talking Bollocks Towers uh, stereo. Um, and uh, and yeah, and also the um, I got the the Blu-ray package from Base.com. Um, which is b a s e dot com um, for twelve ninety five. What a package! What a package! A whole awesome Slayer gig on Blu Ray from um, oh for fucking hell, work from Vacuum last year, and a forty five minute documentary on the making of it. And believe it or not, you get a free CD with a new album on it as well. Well, hey, um, and it's brilliant. It's just an all round awesome package. Really impressed. Love it. Absolutely fucking love it. Although one thing I'm not impressed with is um, in some of the interviews I've seen, um, Tom is asked, um, and you know you get the subtitles. Sorry, not subtitles. You get the title of the question sort of flashed up in text on screen, and then you hear right, you know the the, the reply, and um, and it's flashed up, and it's you know it's an American interview. It says, Does your kids like Slayer? Really, really. No one fucking thought of taking the ES off that. Do your kids like Slayer? For fuck's sake. I'm sorry, I'm, I am a bit of a, a spelling and a grammatic fucking Nazi. Despite, well, you wouldn't know it by the way I fucking spell, but there you go. Um, so, what else is going on? Um, thanks to Pete Gray for sending me um, a cover of the new um, Butcher Babies album, um, which I, we've all had a hilarious laugh at before called Take It Like a Man. And... Um, the the cover is is one of the shittest things I've ever seen. In fact, um, Pete quite rightly posted it. Said, "Look, I can't even be bothered to be sarcastic with this." It's basically what appears to be a young girl in a pink party dress at, in a playground, wearing a sort of Saxon vi- no, not Saxon Viking helmet with horns on, um, and it completely and it's full face helmet and covers her face. And that's take it like a man. Brilliant. Well done, girls. Um, they uh, they've now claimed that, that all the uh, the um, the tape on the boobs was all um, was all Wendy O Williams um, homage and all the rest of it and you know uh, they want to be positive role models and uh, it's just fucking yeah despite all of that the music shit love so just fucking pack it in um, uh, moving, my uh, my uh, my fitness regime my tour fitness regime took an interesting twist. Um, I've been reading a book, um, the third book in a series of books by a guy called The Secret Footballer. This is a premiership footballer. Um, if you're American and you're listening in, football is a game play- played with feet, not with hands and fucking helmets, you steroided up fucking obstinate meat-headed cunts. Right? Looks like a game played by fucking motorcycle couriers. American football, what a, what a sack of fucking shit that really is. Honestly, I cannot fucking believe it exists. Call it a sport. Fuck you. Chopped into quarters so we can have plenty of advertising. I mean, how long is the Super Bowl these days? Uh, ten hours, is it? Who's doing the... And, and let's face what's the Super Bowl famous for? I'll tell you what. Celeb-packed adverts and who's doing the halftime show? Fuck all to do with sport whatsoever. Just a big fucking corporate jizz-off. And yet people in America seem to think that it's the biggest sporting occasion in the world. Not even fucking close! Not even close! If you're listening to this and you think that the Super Bowl is anywhere near, anywhere near the European Cup final, the Champions League final, the fucking um, uh, European Championship finals, you're fucking mad! You know why? Because you're just one country. A big country, I'll grant you. I'll grant you that. You're a big country. 
but you're not as big as the rest of the world. And the rest of the wor- world plays football. So take a big, f- take a soccer ball and shove it right up your fucking stupid ass. If you think that that fucking Super Bowl means fuck all to fucking anyone, fucking anywhere other than fucking America. Well, North America, the USA, the United States, because obviously America is a whole continent. So there you go, that's a little bit of rant that I didn't actually see coming um, about American football. So, back, <laughs> total tangent, this is what it's all about. So, um, anyway, Secret Footballer is, is, is talking, to, he's basically a Premier League footballer, no one knows who he is, there's loads of dif- disinformation in his books, you don't know who he is, but he was just, I got totally blindsided reading this book, and he started talking about, um, about their nutrition, um, and what they do and they take omega-3 pills and cod liver oil pills um, every morning and I was thinking well fucking hell if these multi-million pound assets are doing that kind of regime it makes total sense for me to be doing it fucking you know two quid for a, a couple of a couple of bottles of pills from Boots job done um, and then I started reading about the um, the benefits of creatine or creatine whatever you want to call it um, it's a complete um, creatine monosulfate to give it its full name. I know that sounds like I'm doing a shitload of steroids. It's not. It's absolutely perfectly clean and legal creatinine or creatine. I still haven't nailed down the pronunciation of which one I'm going to go with. Should, what, what should we do? Creatine, creatine. Mm, I think creatine. I like that. I like that more. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Right, no, I'll stick with that. So creatine is um, it's created with, by the body. And basically what you do, it's a powder or you can get it in mint form. And they're fucking chalky. It's like eating a fucking tree full of fucking rennies. Um, and basically you take it half an hour before a uh, short burst of exercise and it gives you greater stamina. Um, and boy, it does. Um, I can vouch for that. But also you take, a, a, as soon as you finish training... You take um, a, a sachet or some mints or whatever um, of said creatine. Was it or was it creatine? I can't remember which one I settled on. Fuck it. Um, and um, and yeah, it, it really aids recovery as well. I mean, I was at the gym yesterday, battering in it. And today, you know, normally I would be, I, I you know, I, I mean, do all my relevant stretches and everything, but I'd still be feeling it a bit. But as it is, not at all. You know, it's, it really does make a difference. So. Yeah, so the old tour um, fitness regime has been going pretty well, guys. I'm um, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with myself, um, uh, and yeah, I've just uh, you know, no drinking, I cut the smoking right down, um, and just really trying to focus on um, on on you know being as fit as possible. Um, so what else happened this uh, this month? Yeah, off me and my fucking massive ego. Um, okay, so something I never thought I would ever um, I, I would ever see, and I'm sure some some of you may have seen this story. Gene Simmons not a fan of Randy Blythe's vocals. Um, well, you know, here are some words I never thought I'd say. I agree with Gene Simmons. What the fuck is going on? I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. But then, then. Paul Stanley managed to come along and save me. For a minute, I was thinking, oh, maybe Kiss aren't so bad. But then Paul Stanley came along, called Dee Schneider a fucking wannabe and uh, and Twisted Sister a bunch of buffoons. And I just thought, ha ha, back to where we started. It's Paul and Gene the cunts. Um, I, I've never liked Paul Stanley. He's a fucking joke. And Gene Simmons is outspoken and basically said that it's a joke that there's two guys in Kiss at the moment who wear the same face paint, paint as ex as ex members, and it's just a bit it's a bit disrespectful and horrible. And he's absolutely fucking right. Um, and his his podcast to follow up on Paul Stanley's comments is brilliant. It's about an hour and twenty minutes long, and he only spends about fifteen minutes dealing with Paul, and he does it fucking brilliantly. It's it's really worth a listen. So D Schneider Schneider comments is the podcast, right? Um, go to the most recent one. And I'm, I'm saying this on the twentieth of September, so it's um it's a few days ago. Um, and check out the podcast because it really is awesome. Um. In fact, let me... Have, yeah, Snyder comments. Snyder is S-N-I-D-E-R. The podcast is called... Um, uh, what? Sneak D. Snyder Ponders the Week. It's from... It's dated uh, Wednesday. So whatever the fucking date was on Wednesday. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Try and help people out. And you can't... Right, here we go. Yeah, Wednesday the 16th. So it's, it's the podcast from that day. Um, it's really cool. And and not only that, he covers that. He deals with that. And, but he spends a long time talking about um, the uh, his 
uh, when he went up to the White House and spoke about the PMRC and the Senate hearing on censorship. It's the 30th anniversary of um, uh, of that, which is fucking scary because I remember that. Um, and it's really it's really worth a listen. It's a, such a fascinating, engaging podcast. Um, and um, I'd like to think, like me, the MD has a massive ego, but he is aware of it and tries to keep it in check. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he, he does his best, but it, it's fucking awesome. It really is. Um, but look, that's 20 minutes of me jibber-jabber, um, as I don't like to try and go on too much, so um, why don't we get a, uh, let's get a fucking interview up here. I know what you're thinking. Um, let's get let's get Broderick on. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Now, um, I'm going to give you fair warning about this interview, okay? It's about half an hour long, because uh, Chris is a very popular guy. He's also a really nice guy, and he's a lovely guy, a really nice bloke. Um, however... One of the people in this interview is a disorganised fucking knobhead who does his best to fucking ruin it. Yep, me. Here's Chris and me being a fucking idiot. Here we go. Nope, still not showing on the phone. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like uh, I'm showing on the phone there, does it? No. Weird. Hello, Chris. Hey, what's happening, Howard? Sorry about the mix-up. Um... It looks like between my laptop and my phone, Skype's getting kind of confused. So. Uh, yeah, I, I know the feeling. I've, I, it, that happens with me sometimes as well. Yeah. So what's happening? Uh, well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, quite, quite a lot, quite a lot for. Um, uh, I've got to be honest, quite a lot for both of us. I'll, um, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a little, um, uh, a little catch up. Um, uh, I was in a, a thrash band about 25 years ago, and uh, we, we put three or four albums out when we were kids. And it's been 25 years, and I've got a bunch of new guys, and we've just put out a new song, um, and that's been crazy. And I've been doing stand-up comedy for the last 15 years since um, uh, I, since I quit music. So that's um, the kind of interview I should expect today. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically. Um, uh, don't worry, ease up. I'm not gonna get. I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna give you like you know all the questions that everyone else is giving you. We'll, we'll just have a chat. All right, sounds good to me. Cool, cool, man. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're um you're in quite a unique position, aren't you? Are, are you um are, are you embracing the um the, the feeling of of kind of starting starting anew? Yes, I am definitely. It's it's one of those things where. You know, now I, I, you know, obviously I get all the creative and the musical freedom that I've ever wanted, but you're also coming back in at the ground floor, you know? So you've got a lot more work to do, and it's not just going to be, you know, things aren't going to get done for you. It's, so to me, it's, it's definitely a plus. Uh, but then, like I said, there's a lot of work to do, so i got to stay on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, also, I think uh, with the change in the industry, um, it's 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 a it's a harsher fall. I think you know, oh, yeah. you know, when when the industry was um, was a bit more stable, you you wouldn't be starting from where you are now. You'd be starting from a, a bit further up. Right. You know, but you know, I'm I'm in a pretty fortunate position um, that uh, you know I don't. It's it's not like I'm. It's either. Either I'm going to make this work or I'm going to go flip hamburgers at, you know, your local <laughs> restaurant or something like that. I'm, yeah. I'm really kind of lucky in that way where, you know, I, I want this to definitely succeed, but it's not a necessity for me, for my well-being. Yeah, yeah. And well, that, and that's the best way, that's the best way to be because otherwise you can just be, you know, you, you can get consumed by things and instead of enjoying it, you, you it just becomes pressure. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I hear you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I was, um, 
I was thinking it's uh, I, I actually I think I saw uh, well I I know I saw you I saw um, I saw you when you played with uh, with Megadeth on the Big Four in um, in Germany I can't remember which which gig I went to but um, uh, and that that was just that was an incredible experience. Yeah, it was. I mean, all of those shows were great. You know, such an such a, a, an awesome experience to be able to, especially get up at the end of the night, you know, with Metallica and Slayer and Anthrax and jam out a song. Yeah. That yeah. to me was, it was like, I mean, you know, so iconic. And, and, you know, Metallica was so gracious to us. You know, I mean, they're at such a level, you know, they don't really need, you know, any of the other bands to really make their careers or anything like that. But I really felt that they were helping to, elevate the other band's careers and, and the thrash community in general yeah. by putting this on. It was it was just such a cool thing. I, I think it's the kind of thing that, that, that um, people will look back in, uh, on in decades and, and different generations will look back. Um, uh, it's almost like a sort of heavy metal Woodstock, you know, it's like one of those yeah. moments, one of those moments in time where, uh, you know, one of these things happened just because, you know, yeah, like you say, one band wanted to make it to ha- wanted to make it happen, and you know, it, it just yeah, it, all, all the stars aligned. Yeah, yep. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, well, like, I mean, they're, they're, they're incredible memories to have, and, and I guess right now you're kind of you're you're looking at the the next stage of your life, really. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, I'm. You know, we've got the CD written, and it comes out August twenty first here in a little over a week. I, I and... love, I love that you call it CD, by the way. Yeah, right. Damn well, straight. Hey, CD, album, record—they're all good with me. Right. Well, it's funny now. Now I guess the the main thing you should call it is a collection of songs, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. Oh, yeah, because the album's dead, didn't you know? Oh yeah. Well, no, I heard it's it's. Like album is really, you know, it's kind of making a comeback from what I hear. <laughs> a lot of people are, you know, collecting vinyl, and not only that, there are a lot of audiophiles who think that the vinyl actually sounds better than a CD, and and even definitely MP3s, you know. So. Oh no, sorry. I I, I actually said um I actually said album as in the uh, as in the concept of the album is dead. Um, oh, no, I see. no, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you on vinyl. Um, you know, uh, it's it, it's we yeah, one one of the uh, well, it's I think is it close to being the number one physical product sales. It certainly made a major mm-hmm. comeback. Yeah, that I don't know, but but uh, I know what you're talking about with with the term album. Yeah, you know, it's all about streaming and individual songs to download and and all of that so yeah i mean it's got to the stage now where you it's kind of like you you know downloads are now precious as well because the concept of people just not even owning music and just streaming whatever they want whenever they want it um, right. meaning they don't have to own it means it's just it's like a another level of non engagement it's you know, it's yeah. it's just it boggles my mind. I I can't believe it. Right. You know? Well, yeah, it's it's very different from me too. My mindset, where you know, you were you were at the record store and you were looking through the albums or you know or CDs or whatever, and you know, and you saw the new you know the new CD out by your favorite band, and you just had to have it. You wanted it to be yours. You know, you wanted it to be part of you. Absolutely. And, uh, I don't get that sense from streaming. Streaming is just, you know, it's cool. Like, I, I like using streaming to find new bands that I like, you know. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll use, like, Pandora or I'll listen to Sirius XM. And, you know, that's how I found out about, like, bands like Revocation or Veil of Maya and, you know, some of those heavier bands. And, and yeah. uh, so... You know, I use streaming for that kind of thing, but it's almost like this kind of nice random search tool. It's like, it, you know, you can you can kind of specify what you want to hear, but not so specific that you're only getting one band or one type of music. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, it, it's an incredible tool to have at your fingers. Um, yeah. 
um and and yeah i'll i'll stream stuff or uh, or i'll get stuff free from record companies and um and if i like it i'll then i'll go out and buy the physical cd because i want to play that exactly and i want to play that in my car as well because the difference with an m an mp3 um and a cd the difference in a car is is huge i don't know why but maybe i'm just you know being weird but it's <laughs> you know to me in a car it, the cd just sounds like unsurpassable it's awesome Right, right. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I remember. Um, I, I think I got the digital copy of Death Magnetic um, when it came out before I got the CD, and mm-hmm. I and I played it in the car, and I was like, mm, yeah, I'm not sure about that production. Um, mm-hmm. and then I got the CD and went, oh fucking hell, <laughs> right? Yeah. There's the bottom end. All oh, right, yeah. It, it kind of it balances now. Yep. Yeah, it's. You know, and it all depends on, you know, the quality of the uh, the format, too. You know, there can be some lossless audio um, digital files as well that are not CDs that sound really good, but yeah. you have to know what you're looking for, you know, whether it's black or, you know, a really high variable bit rate MP3, you know. Yeah. So speaking, speaking of which, um, I guess you're approaching, um, when you were talking about, uh, complete creative freedom you've also got I, I guess um you'll be you know a major you'll be a, a major input into how the how it's packaged the the artwork and and how the whole thing's represented as well will that be uh will that kind of be new territory for you oh, a little bit i had a little bit of experience with that in uh the band jag panzer yes um, yes but well, you were in them for, you know, yeah you were in them for years and i was i was going to get onto that don't worry i i, I know your history sir <laughs> okay, so so you know as far as deciding the artwork and what the you know what it should convey, um, you know I had a little bit of experience, but this time it was really we were able to really hone in on on what we wanted and uh, to be able to hire Travis Smith to do the the CD or the album artwork was was a great honor and he's somebody whose whose artwork you know it really speaks to me and and uh, I think people will like what he came up with. Oh, that's awesome. That's and that that's a that's kind of that. Well, that's yeah. That's a, a really a, that's a really kind of cool thing to happen when you can get somebody involved like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Well, we we like. Go ahead. I, well, do you know what? I, I I'm some uh, I get I get shit from some of my listeners about how I always um I always bring all I always bring every interview back to me. But I I just had something recently that is a complete match up of what you were talking about. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I said we we just released our first song for twenty five years about a month ago, and um, right. the the artwork for it, the digital artwork for it, is a picture by an American artist called Laurie Lipton. Um, and she works in pencil, charcoal, and on paper only. Um, and I've been Very a fan. Cool. I've been a f- yeah. Oh, it's amazing stuff. Honestly, look her up. I'll I'll send you a link. Um, All right. Um, it, she's it, yeah. She's incredible. And um, I've been a fan of hers for about thirty years. I saw it when I was fifteen, um, and I've just loved her stuff. I've got some autograph books in the house, and I just thought I'd send an email to her agent via her website saying you know any chance of getting any permission for some artwork and Mm -hmm. um and i got an email back from laurie lipton herself within 10 minutes saying um which piece do you want to use and uh, yeah isn't it just but then i had to realize but i was like yeah i don't i didn't really i hadn't got that far in the thought process so i had no idea what picture i was going to use so i went back to her website and the main picture that is a home page was absolutely perfect. So I just took a, really? a yeah, I just took a screen grab of that, sent it to her, and said this. We fired emails backwards and forwards for another ten minutes, and within about half an hour, she'd given us permission to use it. And I was just, you know, grinning like a Cheshire wow. cat. That's awesome. Yeah, That's man. That's very cool to hear. Oh, it's uh, it's just yeah, it was just amazing. You know, I've still got all the emails she sent me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, cool. yeah exactly um it's just it's really cool I, um yeah i got funnily enough i've got an email kicking around um from um are, are you a, are you a pink floyd fan at all yeah yeah 
Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, it's not like they're, um, like I've got all their CDs in my collection or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, I do listen to them, you know, occasionally when I'm in a mellow mood. Have you, um, uh, are you a fan of The Wall at all? Yeah, I like The Wall, but Dark Side of the Moon would probably be my favorite. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah, that's, an, that's just uh, um, a legendary album right there. They both are really. But, yeah. yeah. Have you seen um? Have you seen the um the movie The Wall? No, I have not. Oh man, that's that's that. Yeah, that's a must see. That's that huh. that is a definite must see. Um and um yeah it, yeah it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Anyway, it seems to have drifted down Pink Floyd uh, Pink Floyd Road. By the way. Um, so, um, uh, I, I, forgive me. Um, I'm not, I haven't, I, I, I might be, um, in, not in the know here. Um, have you got, have you made any live plans yet? Uh, yes, we're working on a couple of potential tours right now, but we're, you know, we haven't quite confirmed them yet. So I can't, you know, mention them specifically. I can say oh, we're look, working on getting no, out in the late fall. No, no, Chris, Chris, it's all right. You can say no one listens to this. <laughs> well, somebody's got to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I know, seriously, it's just between you and me. You just, you just tell all me, right. all right, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure no one listens. <laughs> well, let's let's put it this way: we're working on trying to come to your neck of the woods. Ooh, we're working on it. Right, if it happens. You know. Right. Um, okay. And it should should be before the end of the year. Awesome. Right. Well, look, I'm in. I'm in London, so um, I will be. Uh, I'll be coming down. I'm sure you've got lots of friends in London. Um, yeah. I, but um, but you know you've you've got another one now, whether you like it or not. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so I'll come come hunt you down. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that that's that's brilliant, man. That's that's great. Um, would you be um Would you be in a headline capacity, or um uh you know heading up a bunch of bands, or or, or coming? Um, with somebody else. Well, we're actually it, it, the, that particular tour is looking like it would be an opener. But to tell you the truth, that's exactly what we want at this point in time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Less yeah. pressure, uh, crossover crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're really trying to establish our fan base. You know, people may be curious about, you know, Act of Defiance. They, you know, they may know where Sean and I come from and Henry comes from and Matt comes from, but it's, it's one of those things where that doesn't instantly produce your fan base, you know? Yeah. It just, it, it maybe makes people curious, but you need to establish your fan base. And that's really done through, you know, playing to, to, to big crowds and, and stuff like that. So that's why we want to be an opener at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I get that. I absolutely get that. Yeah, it's just uh, like you say, it's it, it's less pressure and 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 it's where it's where you start out as well, isn't it? It, it makes sense um, rather yeah. than going in and trying to. Yeah, what you know? What band on their on their debut CD, you know, goes out and head, you know, makes it right to the top and headlines? It's uh, it's. <laughs> I don't know of any band that's ever done that. I'm sure weirder things have happened but i don't know of any band that's that's done that so yeah yeah no absolutely um so it's so a bait you're going to be looking at um uh, a serious amount of time on the road then yeah i would say considerable you know i don't know that we want to grind it out you know like nine or ten months out of the year but you know i would say for us probably I would say a good balance to not oversaturate any market. We could probably be out about six months out of every year. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but but I, but I kind of get the feeling just from uh, from uh, what you said there that there's there's also um, we were talking earlier about you know you've got to enjoy it and 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 there just seems to be a sense where it's like yeah we're going to go out on tour and we're going to work hard but we're not going to kill ourselves. Yeah, I mean, well, it it all depends right now. At the, in, in, at the beginning and the start of this, we need to be very careful about how we go out and tour. We need to we need to take the opportunities that we get at this point in time and really establish ourselves. So whatever it takes to, to make that happen, you know, we're willing to do. 
Um, right. You know, as far as down the road, you know, once we feel like we're established, then I don't think we'll have to worry about taking every possible tour that um, that is offered to us. Yeah. And I think that's also a benefit, too, because I've seen it where when you over tour and you you play through the same market too many times, you know, that the, the crowds diminish and, you know, the offers get lower and, you know, it's just not not a smart move. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you're um, so obviously you said you're coming to our neck of the woods. That's um, that's good, um, and presumably you're just looking forward to to travelling the world yet again. Um, I, you know, I, yeah. I mean, it sort of comes with the territory. It's, it's for some reason, you know, all musicians have to um, you know have to like travelling, or you're pretty much fucked. Well, um, yeah, you, I'll put it to you this way: I don't know that travelling is my favourite thing. I li- I like travelling, okay. But it's, I, I definitely start to lose that center of home, you know, after a while. So yeah. after about, you know, maybe two months of being out on the road, it, I'll definitely start to really want to see my house again, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I do. And, and it's, it, I guess it's, uh, unless you've lived that life, it's it's very hard to to kind of understand because you think, but that's because people's perceptions of life on the road is so far removed from the reality, which is no, it is not one long party. Um, you right. Know, it, it's yeah. it's it's grueling, and you know, and and a hotel is a treat, and it's well, you know, yeah. And the funniest thing is, a lot of people will go like, they'll tell you, oh. This- awesome you you've been to france you've been to <laughs> india you've been to australia you know all yeah. these places you know great places what did you see uh i didn't get to see anything why not well we rolled in but with about an hour to spare to do sound check and then we had meet and greets and then we had press and then we had to do our warm-ups and then we played our show and then we had to leave so that we could drive in time to get to our next show, you know. <laughs> so yeah. traveling, you know, in, for for music in a way is not traveling like everybody else thinks it is. You know, sometimes it, you rarely get to see that much of the uh, city or the country that you're touring in. Well, basically, I think I suppose you could you could it, better terms to couch it in would be um, it's like traveling a really really long way to work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So it's basically you, it's like it's like it's like basically commuting. You know, you yeah. you, you just you, the you know uh, you just got to get from A to B, show up and do your job, and then go again. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know, at least you get to see lots of different airports. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I could definitely live without. Oh yeah, uh, it, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. It's just uh, horrible, horrible places. Yep. And nobody, nobody in airport seems to know that um, the real value of things because they just decide to make everything way more expensive than it is in the real world. Yeah, yeah. They'll all overcharge you for breathing the air if they could. Oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, so, um, what part? What part of the states are you um, are you living in at the moment? I'm in Los Angeles. Ah, right. Okay. So everybody drives everywhere. So I'm told. Yes, because it's you know it's obviously a really large city, but it's like urban sprawl. You know, it's so so spread out. You know, it's not like uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Sao Paulo, Brazil. No, but man. They they've just got these you know, an insane amount of tall apartment buildings and complexes and stuff like that. And just a ton of people living in, you know, it's probably very organized. And so people can get around without vehicles, but that is not LA at all. (laughs) LA is, you know, tons and tons of individual houses sprawling forever and ever, you know? And so when you want to go to your neighbor's house, you got to drive, you know, (laughs) that's bizarre. (laughs) <laughs> so, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's just me being dumb. Um, uh, um, right, because that's um, so. Are, are you all 
within the same area or are you how did you kind of like meet with the other guys well henry lives here in la with me uh but matt lives in uh where does he live north carolina i believe so uh you know i've never even seen matt's house or anything like that i've met him on the road many times and and uh through the nam show uh hung out with him before but i've never seen his house in person actually right okay that's it. That that Sean, I, 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 that's Sean, that's a good way of putting it. Actually, is to like you know I I I know what you mean. I'm kind of like I, I would use that as a defining rod. Do you know what I mean? It's like I've never seen his house. That's quite yeah. important. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, well, I'm sure you will do one day. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we'll be rolling through his town on tour, and you know, we'll stop there and hang out there, have a barbecue or something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be well. Look, um, you sorry. You were saying that you you were all kind of well. You there's you're you've got one of the bands staying with you at the moment. No, no. Um, I didn't say anything like that. No, no. I thought, no, no. I thought you said he. You, you said he lives with. Oh, you said he lives me with me here in L.A. Sorry, and I it, it kind of went oh. into my brain and went. He lives with me. <laughs> right. And so, I, yeah, no, I, thought, I, I thought you had him as like a house guest or something. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm completely confused. Sorry. Uh, it's entirely my fault. Um, so, that's two of you in LA. One in, you were saying... North Carolina. North Carolina. And Sean is in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. So getting together for rehearsals is uh, not exactly something you can do. Um, <laughs> no, that has to be very well planned out, but that's, you know, that's the way of things. That's, um, it's pretty common. Sean and I are both very used to that. Um, and, uh, so, you know, when we rehearse, it'll be out here in LA and, uh, that, that's the least number of flights then, you know, to get everybody in the same place. And then, you know, probably I'll hang out here at my house and then uh, do rehearsals. There's all kinds of rehearsal places here in L.A. that uh, are great for, for doing just that. So, Cool. Cool. So um, uh, I, I, have, you got a, so have you got a management company that, uh, that are helping you out um, at this stage? Yes, yes, we have a manager. Right, cool. So um, that's logistics and everything, so, and, and you guys just have to worry about making music exactly yeah that's cool that's cool yeah. so so you said the c that you said the cd's done as in finished completely like you know ready to go to manufacture uh it's it's coming out in nine days or eight days now so oh, it's shit. been ready to go it's, yeah it's right fuck me Right, yeah, okay, so it better be good. Sorry, I completely hadn't got the release date at all. I um, heard the two tracks. Um, uh, really, I, The second one really surprised me. Um, uh, that was, yeah, I, I'm liking both. Looking forward to hearing it. Cool. Awesome. So, um, I, obviously, um, uh, you've come out. It, it is, and now I'm going to really k kick myself here. It's on Metal Blade, right? Yes, it is. Yes, right, okay. So, look, I've, I've already fucked up with the release date. I didn't want to fuck up the record label as well. No worries, man. <laughs> um, so, um, yep. so, how, so how did the Metal Blade um, deal come about? Well, you know, I... Um, and a very sort of traditional thrash metal label as well. It's like there's some nice heritage there. Right, right. Um well, what happened is, you know, we were looking at a multitude of labels, but, you know, through knowing uh, Brian Slagle and some of the other people that work at Metal Blade, um, it was uh, it became clear that, you know, Brian Slagle was still in the game. He's still so into metal and, and you know, he loves uh, the genre of music and he promotes it, you know. He's not just a corporate owner now. And uh, that really really you know it made me excited about working with metal blade and uh another funny thing is that metal blade you know they're the people that have worked there have worked there forever they don't you know it's not like they're just a bunch of interns that are rolling over from year to year you know they're people that know the business exceptionally well they've been in it 
they live it, they love it. You know, I see those guys, um, Vince and Heather and, and all the rest of them, Tracy Vera, they're all out going to shows, you know, yeah. every, every weekend, every night, you know, it's just crazy. I'll always see them everywhere. So, um, that's another good sign too. They're actively involved in, in the music. So yeah, that's what made us really want to go with, with metal blade. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. That, that, that's, that's properly old school. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, just go going with the people who know about the music. That's yeah, that would make sense. Yep. And there is so much heritage there as well. I mean, um, and and they've got some great new bands as well. I mean, uh, you mentioned Revocation earlier. Um, yeah. Who uh, who were yeah, a absolutely amazing band. That uh, last album was just incredible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a great guitarist. You know. Good guys, so I can't wait to uh, to hear some more of what they come up with too. Yeah, yeah, I think they've um, they've switched drummers, um, and um, uh, which was a shame. But um, you know, I'm sure. Uh, hey, everyone switched drummers once in a while. I believe um, I believe a band called Megadeth has uh, just switched drummers as well. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you it wouldn't ha- you wouldn't ha- you wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? No, not not one. No. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because you you went from Jag Panda straight to to this, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow, so- somehow I can't remember any of the past fifteen years of you know <laughs> or, or eight years of my life. But. Yeah. Yeah, but you, it must be. Uh, I mean, you must be sick to death of talking about it. Don't worry, I'm not. I'm not going to lead you down the garden path to talk about it. I'm. I'm, I'm more interested in the fact that you must get questioned so much about it. Doesn't it ever just. Doesn't it ever wind you down? Um. Well, it's no. It's you know, for me, I'm always fine answering questions about what you know people are interested in. Uh, but you know, at the same time, they're not going to get for me like any trash talking or anything like that it's just it's not the way that that i choose to represent myself and you know the way that i've seen all of my past endeavors is you know you take it for what it's worth and you're always you know deciding is this more valuable than not being in this band or whatever and if you have that attitude about it then you don't you don't get bitter you don't get jaded and uh, you just try and make the best decision based on what you know. That's um, that's that, that's a, as clear a philosophy on um, on how to be in a band and the correct mindset that um, I think it's it's possible to have. To be honest, I think you've really right. I, I, yeah. I, I think you should have that put in your gravestone. That was fucking amazing. <laughs> well. <laughs> That, I don't know about that, but it, no, seriously, it, it you're my, you're, you're absolutely spot on. I'll put it to you that way. It helps my sanity. Yeah, but you're absolutely spot on. You're absolutely spot on. It's just like you know, sit in the pocket, duck, dive, just keep your eye on the prize, and make you know, make clear-eyed decisions on the information yeah. at hand. And yeah, like you say, you know, absolutely. So, yeah. He, 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 um, yeah, some. Um, so, uh, do you remember that? Uh, uh, do you know a Bruce Lee quote about water? He's he talks about. Um, you there? Yeah, are you there? Hello. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah, still here. Still here. Uh, you there? Uh, yeah. Are you there? Sorry, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I've got another interview coming in. Yeah, yeah. Trying no. to get a hold of me. All right. Look, no problem, man. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to cut and run, that's cool, man. Okay. Yeah, I should get going to the to the next one and. Okay. No worries. You know, but uh, thank you very much for your time. Hey, don't be silly. That's my that's my line. Thank you very much for your time. 
Um, uh, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you very much for taking the time. I wish you the best of luck with the band. And um, I'll try and introduce myself when you're in London. Um, and I'll buy you a beer. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Howard. No problem. All the best. See you in London. Cheers. Take care. So there you go. That is how to be a massive dick in an interview. Um, uh, look, it, 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 I could go on about mitigating circumstances from my side and all that, but you don't want to hear that, do you? No. Uh, and uh, there are no. Uh, there's nothing I can say really. Um, I, I just, uh, yeah. I, what a fuck up. Uh, um, what an absolute fuck up. Um, oh, you know. So is the album ready? Uh, you know, is, is it? Yeah, it's coming out in nine days. Of course it is. You fucking knob. Um, and then I go on, uh, it just like, you know, it's, oh, it's rampant ego. I listen back to it and I just think, what the fuck was I doing? Do you know what I mean? It's Chris Broderick, spent 10 years in Megadeth. And he's like, you know, so what's going on? And I just fucking spew out all over his fucking face. Um, going on about, oh, acid rain this, acid rain that. Oh, we're coming back. And oh, our artwork. Oh, well, we, uh, we, we got the artwork from this. And it's like, fucking hell, like he wants to know any of that. Jesus Christ. He must be on the other end thinking, dude, I thought you were interviewing me. Gee, it's just... Honestly, I don't, I, 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 I'm not proud of it. I listen back, what a... Anybody out there thinking, fucking hell, Howard, that was a bit of shit. You were a bit of a dick in that interview. What? Absolutely. Fucking right there on the same page as me, mate. Or mateess, if that is a fucking word. If there's, if there's a, <laughs> any female listeners, um, they could be talking... They can be bollockers, yeah, male bollockers, female bollockerettes. <laughs> Are we just interview? I'm just inc- inter- interviewing. Incredible, um, making things up. No, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, fuck it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, look. Um, yeah. So fucking hell. What? Um, uh, yeah. Poor Chris being on the end of that. Um, and then sa- there's me sounding sounding vaguely like a stalker. Um, uh, now that now that we're friends, you know, I'm going to buy him a beer because I spoke to him. Well, I spoke to him for half an hour and told him all about um, acid rain that somehow makes us friends. So, um, so yes, um, not proud of myself. Um, bit of a dick in that interview, um, uh, and um, you know, Chris, being the consummate professional, um, didn't uh, didn't mention once the fact that I was being such a cock. So um, that was good. Um, so uh, moving on. Um, a fucking what a top bloke, great Dave Grohl is, isn't he? Hey, I mean that that huge fucking um, chair that he's uh, that sort of throne uh, that he's he's had made so he can do gigs, but sat down. That's fucking awesome, um, and um, and and the fact that he protested the Westboro Westboro Baptist Church. I'm not going to give them the oxygen of publicity, but I'm sure any everybody knows about the Westboro Baptist Church, and they were protesting his gig. So he rocked up with the truck and protested them. What a fucking hero. Um, uh, and uh, you know, a friend of mine went to see him at Milton Milton Keynes Bowls and uh, Bowls. <laughs> there is just one Milton Keynes Bowl, um, and yeah, he and and, and uh, he was just awesome by the sounds of it. Just a really fucking cluding guy, down to earth, and um, uh, it's just a shame his band's so shit, really, isn't it? Um, uh, Foo Fighters do fucking nothing for me whatsoever. Same thing every time. You hear one song and you think, oh, this sounds quite good. You know, I, I got suckered into buying a couple of our albums and just went, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, but, uh, but you know, what can I say? Sounds like a really nice guy. Got to hand it to him. You know, top man. Um, uh, and moving on, I saw a Chris Adler. <laughs> this, 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 uh, so Chris Adler playing in Megadeth, obviously, uh, Lamb of God drummer. Um, I've mentioned this before on a podcast and uh, I, I saw an interview with him um, and uh, the headline was um, uh, Adler we laugh all the time we laugh all the time and it was just like it, it just sounded like the kind of line that you hear from from a couple who are going through through problems or do you, do you know it just sounded like you know um, you know, you know when a, say a couple of friends get together and they try and convince everybody that it's that it's really cool and they're having a great time, despite the fact that, like you you on the outside looking in, you look at you look at this couple and you just think that's really odd, it shouldn't work, um, and you've just got, you've got Adler going, oh yeah, you know, oh we laugh all the time, you know, oh Dave, he's you know he's not a maniacal fucking insane dickhead with a megalomania megalomaniacal 
um, complex. No, he's a, he's a lovely bloke. Oh, he's got such a good sense of humour. He's so funny. And it just really does sound like a gay couple trying to, try, trying to just like go on about how wonderful they are together. Um, and and it just made it just made me laugh. Um, uh, so I, yeah, I wanted to share that with. Oh, I'm fucking hell! I can't believe I mentioned this. Book of Souls, Maiden, Book of Souls. Some people are into it. Some people aren't. I gotta say, um, I've played it three or four times. I'm into it. I'm into it. I like it. I think Empire of the Clouds is fucking awesome. Eighteen minutes of Bruce Dickinson genius. Um, also, if you want to hear a great interview, um, his interview on the Eddie Trunk podcast. Yeah, it's a great interview because Bruce is on it, not because Eddie's on it, not because of stammering Rain Man Eddie. Oh, no, not Eddie. Super fan fucking embarrassing, Eddie. Although, having said that, given um, my interview with Chris Broderick, I make um, I make Eddie Trunk sound like fucking, I don't know, somebody that's really good. Um, but um, at least at least I'm not going. And anyway, the thing about it is, I just wanted to say, on seriously, he does talk like that. But it's great because the beginning of the interview, um, Bruce just plays it completely fucking straight, um, which as he's entitled to do. Because one thing I try and make sure I never do is ask a closed question. You can't, and it fucking really annoys me a bit this about interviews, where interviewers are saying, "So the new album sounds great. Uh, you um, you must have had a great time making it." Yes. That's the answer to that question. And sometimes you get you get people saying, "Oh, you know, oh, it's a terrible interview. Oh, he was really curt and really um, and 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 he, you know, he wasn't very he wasn't very nice." And it's like, well, that is usually because the interviewer is asking shit closed questions, you know, it, it, and 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 that's what happens. You should never a- ask a question that somebody can just say yes or no. You've got to ask an open question. Um, so right at the beginning of the interview, he goes, "Oh, you know, he must have had a great time making it," and he goes, "Yep." And um, and they said so. Um, it was recorded in Paris, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it's just great. He really makes him work for it, and you can tell like three or four questions in, he's just making him work for it. And then he kind of he, he kind of goes, "Oh, I can't let the guy struggle along," and he helps him and uh, and expands on questions. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's it's a you know it's a great interview because it's with Bruce. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly worth track it, uh, checking that out as well. Um, and another thing that was on um, Eddie Trunk's podcast was um, the interview with Bill Ward. Now, I'm sure some of you saw this. Bill Ward says the, uh, the, the Black Sabbath album 13 is a pile of shit, right? Now, I listened to the podcast and he does say that. He says he listened to it for about 25 seconds, took it off and said, well, that's a pile of shit, right? He said that. And then it made it, you know, across uh, across the internet, as it were. And then Bill Ward comes out with yet another blabbering, hippie fucking statement going, oh, it, it would seem that my friends in the press have taken one line from an interview and made a big, a uh, big hoo-ha about it. And, oh, you know, it's a, oh, I know what they're up to. And, they, you know, they shouldn't be doing it really, but they do, you know. So let me clarify. I love those guys. We've got history with those guys. I love those guys. I love Tony. I love Ozzy. I love... Oh, will you shut up, you fat fucking useless waste of fucking space and own what you said. Honestly, you're not old enough to realise that when you say something like that, people are going to lift it out of the interview and use it as a headline. Of course they fucking are. Don't blame journalism. Don't blame the internet. Don't blame the need to get listeners and viewers and readers to whatever it is. Blame your fat fucking self for once. Look in the mirror if you can find one big enough that will get all of you in it. Yeah? And own the fucking statement. You said those words own it for fuck's sake I am fucking sick and tired of people coming out saying something and then coming out a little bit later on and going oh no you realise they've offended a few people oh I'm sorry oh I didn't mean it like that oh I was a bit tired oh I was taken out of context fuck all that shit you said it fucking own it stand by what you say say what you mean because when you come out and you then say oh no well I didn't mean it like that and blah blah all that means is I'm going to doubt every word that ever comes out of your fucking mouth ever again because you have ruled yourself out of being taken seriously. It's just absolute bullshit. And, you know, it's mo- he's, he's, he's like, oh, what the fuck? You, what, are you, you know, are you a teenager, are you? Is this the first interview you've done? No? 
No, no, it isn't, is it? You fucking... Honestly, Ward is really fucking getting on my fucking nerves. Because it's all the time. He wants to come across like this this wonderful hippie who never did anything wrong. And it's all about feel. And, ooh, evil contracts. Ooh, they're not fair. Yeah, fuck off. It's pretty obvious, right? Reading... Uh, and then all the heaven, the heaven and hell thing came out as well um, in this interview. Where, um, yeah, funnily enough... He was booted off the Heaven and Hell album. He was supposed to play on that Heaven and Hell, which was original Sabbath with um, with Dio. Sorry, he's grabbing some water there. Um, which is the original Sabbath with Dio. He was supposed to play on that album. It ends up being um, Carmine um, Apathy or a piece or whatever you want to pronounce it, right? Um, because guess what? Bill was taking too long. And he was going, oh, I needed more time. You know, I've got a more organic approach. Yeah, fucking hippie. And, um, uh, and then, oh, and then the contract came along. The contract wasn't signable. Really? Another unsignable contract bill. Well, maybe that's because people are offering you contracts, yeah, that you're worth and you what you think you're worth aren't the same thing. Just maybe, just maybe, your opinion of you and everybody else's is different. Yeah? What are the things that link Sabbath and the unsignable contract and... Heaven and hell in an assignable contract. What are the two things that those things have in common? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's fucking Bill fucking Ward, isn't it? Jeez, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Sabbath. I, I actually don't mind the 13 album. I think it's got some decent stuff on it. I mean, admittedly, Ozzy's vocals are fucking processed to fuck. But, hey, uh, you know, uh, he's sounding half decent for the first time in years. Um, but I don't doubt, I mean, seriously, is there any one of us that doesn't look at a picture of Bill Ward and think when Ozzy said, there's no way this good guy could do a 16-month tour playing like an hour and 45 minutes a night, is there any one single person here who doesn't look at a picture of Bill Ward and think, I don't think he'd be capable of playing 10 minutes a night. He lo- I mean, every picture I see of him, he's hugely overweight and sweating like a fucking rapist. What the fuck? Come on. Sweating like a blind lesbian in a fish shop. Um, <laughs> sweating like a fiddler's elbow. Look, whatever you want to say, like, you know, it's just fucking getting on my nerves. That it, It's like, oh, I want to be loved by everybody. Oh, I never said that. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, fuck off. Just fucking, you said it, own it, move on. Um, anyway, yeah, there's going to be an interview with me coming out in Metal Forces that I did with uh, as an Acid Rain interview. Um, and you'll see exactly what I mean by saying things and then standing by them when you have an opportunity to retract them. Um, whether or not I'm, whether or not I'm actually going to be um, uh, around to do any more podcasts after it comes out, I don't know. But uh, but we'll see. Anyway, um, look, it's time for another. It's time for another interview, obviously. And this one, this time, it's with uh, my boys in Destrage. Um, it was really nice to meet up with uh, Matteo and Paolo. Um, they were awesome, by the way. Um, great show. But uh, without further ado, let's just get stuck straight into the interview. So this is me talking to uh, Matteo and Paolo of Destrage. A couple of weeks ago. All right, now, there we go. Yes, we are recording. Great. So, um, I'm here with, um, uh, 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 you said Matt, Matteo? Matt, Matt Matteo, I suppose. Matteo yeah. and, and Paolo from Death Strange. Um, they both stood up. That feels a bit weird. I feel like I'm going to get beaten up any minute. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you want a photo about uh, this moment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, Matteo, we spoke. Um, if you remember, we were supposed to do a Skype interview, and you yeah. weren't able to make it. Um, uh, and then, and then we did it the following day, right. and it was the day before you went away on tour with. Um, Oh, Protest Hero. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, believe it or not, a couple of weeks later, I was interviewing Rhodey. Oh. And we, were, and we were talking about it. I was saying, oh, I spoke to Matteo. He's like, oh, I wish he was here. <laughs> oh, they're my, you know, they're my guys. I wish they were here. They're great cooks. <laughs> and then we started talking food again. All right. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, we... Um, uh, so, a, a quick recap. Uh, my podcast is called Talking Bollocks. Um, I used to be in a thrash band back in the day called Acid Rain, and then I've been doing stand-up comedy for the last 16, 17 years, and um, I've started the band again, so the band's back. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, so this is a bit weird, so hopefully, you know, one day we'll do it together, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, um, and yeah, so we were talking, you were telling me about when you went, so that you, were, you had uh, tickets for the Champions League at Wembley, 
and all that. Right, right, right. right. It was a couple of the, uh, years yeah. ago. Yeah, he's, right. he's a soccer expert, so today uh, we have the soccer. Right? Well, I nearly, I nearly wore my uh, the, the shirt of my band, which you had. Know, oh, band? band? No, the shirt of my um, uh, my club, which is Leeds United. Is uh, Leeds United? And it's United. Yeah. Marching on together, we're gonna sing you a win. We are yeah. so proud. Yeah. We shout together, so we know you meet Leeds, Leeds. <laughs> How do you know that? Well, because uh, I'm a great football fan, and uh, we love the, um, you know, uh, uh, Leeds uh, ultras. <laughs> because we yeah. know we know these chorus because uh, I, I don't I can't remember actually why, but. Uh, I remember we used it to um, sing the sang this song to a football team of my friend of mine, a oh, friend right. of mine, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's a, I, I have a great friend of mine, uh, which is a very, 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 very um, love, really, really great football fans, and know every every single things about any any team, right. on any any nationality, and uh, uh, he told me about this. Uh, this uh, this great um, this great song yeah, yeah, yeah this great song and uh, uh, so just let me let me show some videos on YouTube uh, and that's all <laughs> that's brilliant yeah because we've got we've got um, a number of Italian players because obviously we're owned by Massimo Cellino he used to own Cagliari Who? Massimo Cellino he Massimo Cellino yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah 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 so he's he was, he, yes he was the Cagliari Cagliari player oh, yeah ex Cagliari player yeah, that's right and he's um he's he's fucking crazy. Yeah, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to sort of the uh, level. I it's doing good. Um, Should we have this side? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Auto. Oh, I have to uh, say, yeah, thing I, no, too. you're right. Yeah, let's take the auto off. Let's oh. take the auto off. Where is it? Uh, this is really awkward because I, um, I is like. Is this live? Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. That's better. That's better. Right. So it's doing good. Um, yeah, he, um, he he keeps being found guilty of tax evasion in um, in your country, and um, and when and when he is um, when he's found guilty of tax evasion in your country, um, all the laws in our in our leagues means he's suspended from ah. being the owner. Ah. So so he was found guilty of tax evasion, so he was suspended yeah. from being able to be involved with the club at all. Um, it's 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 really strange. It's really strange. I mean, he's he's crazy without a doubt. Um, I don't, don't think he's a good person. I, mean, <laughs> I think he's he, he, he good guitar some... player. Yeah, really. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. See, there's things on him. There's things with him on YouTube where he's playing. Um, he's playing uh, with um, uh, oh, Gilmore. 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 Yeah, he's really? playing playing with him. Playing like Floyd tunes and yeah, stuff. It's like what the fuck. Yeah, because a friend of mine, another Leeds fan, I sent him a YouTube clip and said, and said, uh, check out the guitarist. And he's like, why did you send me this? This old guy playing guitar. It's like, because he owns our club. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. But, um, so anyway, um, you, you guys, uh, how's it been? How's Bloodstock? Um, I know, well, I, I've seen on my Facebook, yeah, all my friends who saw you were just like, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Oh, right. we, uh, we really had fans. Yeah, I feel like it was great, and yeah, we made a lot of. Uh, we got a lot of good comments, and the, the crowd was pretty hot there uh, under the tent. It was hot and sweaty. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna stand up because this is this is just a bit weird. Hey, uh, yes, 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 hey, well, 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 we're all around the same height as well. This is nice for me. Normally, I'd like interview people. It's like, and we I was at Bloodstock as well, and I um, I toured back in the day with Nuclear Assault. Old thrash band from years ago, and um, Dan Lilka, the bass player, is like, you know, oh, pretty much the same height. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, and he, he's, he's he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm I'm starting my new band, and they're all like, you know, they're all really tall. Uh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. This is the way a band should be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, should, I should be in Death Street, We so are, we are, yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're fit perfectly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, we are all in the same. Uh, our only tall guy, we told him, uh, man, this is not working out. You have to learn and play the drums so you can be sitting. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Uh, the only yeah, tall yeah, guy is sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah. what tall guys are for. Just sit down, half the height. Yeah. yeah. And now he's the same height as the rest of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just sat down, folded in half. Um, but yeah, no, I heard great things about um, uh, about 
Bloodstock, and um, you were over here last year doing a festival as well, weren't you? Tech Fest. Tech Fest. That's the one, yes. Yeah. So the Bloodstock was a different kind of experience? Big, yeah, huh? big, yeah. big difference. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, like a pro- proper festival. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a very yeah. metal festival. Oh, yeah. Absolutely metal. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There were people who were hanging around dressed like uh, Dread, like I am the Lord. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Um, Jesus, we had Jesus Christ, we had, uh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, so nice of him to come back from the dead just to see Death's yeah, Christ. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> really nice. Yeah. The, oh, yes. We had a guy on wheelchair that built a massive coffin all around him. Ah, actually, that guy, I know who you're talking about, right. and if you see the back of that thing. Yeah. It's the um, it's the throne from Game of Thrones. That's a thing. That's yeah. throne. Right, I, I, right, right, right. I've actually um, uh, I've more, actually got a picture of it. Made, yeah, yeah. He, he made it pretty famous to the festival because it was impossible to notice such a construction. That's the guy. Yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy. And that is the coolest thing ever. Right, right, right. Yeah. That is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, well, you you had Jesus. Uh, uh, it's me hanging out with a uh, pre date. Uh, yeah, yeah, with a couple of friends of mine. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then oh, shit, I got to show you my favourite picture. Sorry about this, by the way. I know this isn't brilliant uh, to, to listen to. <laughs> so, to guys. listen at the our photo view. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> people, the people listening to three guys looking at photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who are all the same height. Uh, so thing. This this was my that's my favourite picture of the day. <laughs> That's like, well, pretty much says it all, guys. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah. couldn't, couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> wow. um, so, it, it, but it is, it's a, it's a great, it's a great festival, um, and it's beautiful. It's just so, so well organised. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how you guys found it, but because I, I was there with um, just doing a guest spot with another band, but I was travelling with them, and everything was just so easy. You know, yeah, just like, it was right. flowing really well. And, yeah, all the crowd, uh, all the staff involved was absolutely way more on the piece than us. I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally pro- professional. Uh, yeah, yeah, but all, all having a good time as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's the, but but again, that, that there is this sort of common misconception that being in a band is all about just getting wasted all the time and and like right. you know. You being a singer, you have to protect your voice. Absolutely. And, and I, if you can play the kind of stuff that you guys are playing, oh, you would be like one beer, forget it. You would be surprised though, oh, really? how much we don't give it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, he has to preserve the voice, and that's true. But I, yeah, I like drinking. Yeah, it yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> he is actually the one that we get devastated sometimes. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Well, I, I look, I look fit and serious, so this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you and how long have you guys been on the road? Because you did obviously you did Bloodstock. Oh, we just made this. Um, uh, we're, we're doing summer festivals, so sometimes we have uh, four gigs in a row, and uh, sometimes we have to wait one week and uh, come back uh, on the road. So this time we just made a uh, free show in the UK, mm-hmm. and um, then we come back home tomorrow. And uh, next week we have uh, another couple of uh, show in Sardinia. So that's, that's a nice way to do it, especially as I have empathy here, but especially as a singer, that's a really nice way to do it, isn't it? To have those like those days oh, and then be able to give your voice a rest. For me, it's perfect. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's perfect. So yeah. doing four gigs in a row and just for two, also two days uh, of break and then other three, four days. Of course, if you can make uh, ten gigs in a row, you're gonna do it. Then yeah. because you can for economic reasons, it's, yeah, it's better. Of course, yeah. yeah. But if that if it is that the, the, the situation, uh, well, it's better for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. I understand. Now, I, 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 what you guys were, um, were one of my favorite albums of the year. You, you came in the top five albums of the year. Um, which um, and that's why I was, I was like really keen to get you guys on. And I, so I hate to say it, but the next question is, when does the when do you start thinking about putting something together for? Ooh, it really happened. Really happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> we yeah. really started thinking right. to put something together. So we started in January, February, and now we're in the middle of the writing process. Right. So actually, uh, one minute before you were entering this room, uh, Paolo came to me and said, "Yeah, you have to." Come and help me with Andrew's accent. Who <laughs> 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 says it? Yeah. Hey, what do you mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody has a 
Paolo! So Come with me, Paolo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a top lad. Me and Ralph, so the two guitarists, we were in this super tiny room with a super tiny amplifier trying to solve out some uh, mindfuck chord progression <laughs> that we started. And yeah. you know what? You start this chord progression, they're like, yeah, first chord's awesome, second awesome, third, and then when you get to the fifth, you, you don't know how to go back in a circle to the first one, so you have to solve it somehow. Yeah. We just found the answer, then you arrive like perfect timing. Great. So, <laughs> so, you, don't, so you don't you don't write you don't write songs. You solve puzzles. We solve puzzles. You solve musical puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did that. But yeah. then we like to keep it visual. Like uh, at home, well, like when we where we write and stuff, we have a big billboard. We used to do it with post-its. Oh right, cool. So you yeah. see, cool. you, 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 I, you, but I like that. It's nice and organic, you know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Actually, if you take a look at us while we, uh, right, it looks like a task force from some secret police trying to track down yeah. some fucking serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like, like cost it, cost it, then you draw like, an arrow, then you make a connection, then you say this is gonna be here. No, this is impossible. <laughs> so you start, you start out writing a song, and you actually end up discovering where ISIS headquarters are. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that. That's insane. I, I, I mean, every band has their own different way. It's 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 kind of. I know it's an old cliche. Like bands are like a, like a, a family. You're in a relationship. And all yeah, that yeah. Stuff. But and, 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 and everybody works. And so every family and every relationship is different. And so every the way every band writes is different. You know, sometimes you've got one guy who brings everything and says this is the way it is, and sure. or two guys, or everybody writes, or some bands jam, some bands don't jam. Mm. Um, and but I've never heard the I've never heard the post it um, <laughs> method before. That I've never heard these solving musical puzzles before. That's uh, yeah, right. that's quite incredible. We we I think we suffer as a some kind of bank city with our music. Bank city, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, that comes. Down the nerves, yeah. To, to have it there Definitely. in front before your eyes, yeah. So you know what's going on, and uh, you don't have to keep it all in, in mind. See, it's just there. You take a look at that, and you're like, oh, we're safe. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. That <laughs> gave us calm. Yeah. But do you think sometimes when a song comes together really easily, yeah. sometimes it's like this is the. It sometimes it just feels like it's not. Mm. It's not that you wrote the song. It's the song you found it. wrote itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you found, found it. Found, yeah. It was it was out there. Yeah. Somewhere, you know, and you just found it. So I listened to um, uh, Noel Gallagher from um, yeah, sure. Oasis. From Big he, fans. Yeah, he was. He said, he said songs fall out of the sky, and I'm just there to catch them. That's right. But you've got to be. But you've always got to have your hands out, and you've always got to be looking because they get dropped all the time. Mm-hmm. And he said, if I don't catch them. Bono will catch them, or Chris Martin will catch them, <laughs> and, and, they've, and they've had plenty of them. <laughs> so it's like it's a great, great, you know, it's a really good way of putting it. It's like they're, they're just yeah. they're out there, and when it comes together, like really, I think the next step is that North Caligar start to kill everyone in the music business. <laughs> <laughs> so so we can count everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I see. You see when that um, when Jay Z and everybody announced their, their their musical endeavor with the you know the new download. For downloadable format and all the rest of it, and um, <laughs> Chris Martin, apparently Chris Martin was on the phone telling Noel Gallagher all about it. Noel Gallagher, just, Noel Gallagher just said, "Well, you know, all stood up there. You look like the fucking Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> you want to concentrate on writing a decent fucking song, mate." <laughs> it's just like the guy's so funny. Yeah, it really yeah, is. It's so funny. I follow him on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's so funny. <laughs> it's great stuff. Have you have you um have you followed um are you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Have you followed Kerry King? No, no. But I saw the photo because I follow uh, Brian Slagle sometimes. Right. Uh, it's if you follow Kerry King, it's all it's totally not what you'd expect. It's no. just pictures of him chilling out at home with yeah. snakes. Snakes. Yeah. Yeah, with like you know, maybe awesome. making some food. It's right. really you know, it's really not what you expect. You know, you'd think it'd be like all metal all the time. <laughs> uh, but I suppose like snakes are. I think metal. the most uh, the most beautiful profile on Instagram is the red light one. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Wow, but he is uh, actually great photographer. Well, yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, and, uh, he, he actually can write uh, good stuff. And, yeah, uh, he's basically. coming out with a novel now. Not the novel, like no, 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 book. Oh, book. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of out, isn't it? So it's sort of coming out in various countries one at a time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. What? I think 
complicated. What when it's coming out? If it's coming out at the same time in every country? Ah, uh, I country. think I don't know for sure in America because we were touring uh, for um, press reasons with Cory Taylor. Oh right, uh, yeah, because it was. Uh, he, 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 he released a, a book yeah. also. Ah, yeah, of course. They tour together to make uh, presentations. And right. That. Yeah, yeah, readings and things. Uh, so that's is. So you guys it's selling it, well. So you guys talk with Cory Taylor. No, no, no. No, sorry, sorry. He toured with. Right. For a minute there, I was thinking you guys toured with Cory Taylor. Oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> um, yeah, because the the whole uh, it's, it's kind of strange because I I really like, I like his photography and I I I be getting the book and I think the way he handled that whole prison thing was you know amazing. Um, just just not a fan. Just not a fan of the. His vocals, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, really? You don't yeah. like them? Nah, nah, I can't. The, the, the I like yours, don't worry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the new record, he attempted on some yeah. clean vocals. I like that. Really? They're good. I like that. It's, it's it, it, many, many, many levels of harmony. More depth. Yeah. And it, it's just, it, when it goes to the growling, it's just, it becomes just, yeah. I can't play. It's just. It's not that it's growling. It's that it's maybe it's just a bit one-dimensional. I don't want to. You know. I don't want to get you drag you guys into. Uh, right. uh, oh, into no, a it's a matter of taste. Yeah, exactly. It's a matter of taste. Absolutely yeah. funny yesterday in Bloodstock yeah. about growling. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, okay, for for who's that haven't been there in Bloodstock, it was a lot of noise because one tent, the other tent, the main stage, then yeah. this county fear, how do you call them, spinning, uh, huge stuff that you can jump on. Oh yeah, the, um, uh, uh, the Ferris wheel. Yeah, those, yeah. those yeah. and they had their own PA with their music, all Last this playing, thing, yeah. Yeah. master of puppets all the time, and they had the most powerful PA in all the, the yeah. other thing. Yeah. So, um, while we were like, uh, setting off everything in the distance, there was uh, there was uh, Kendall Corpse doing the sound check. Right. When the guy was no, 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 not just sound check. No, no, it was the play. It was the proper. It was, yeah, 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 it was, it was we missed that, but because we loved them and we would just love to be there in the crowd, but we couldn't because we had to, you know, uncable everything and yeah. be done really quick. But from the distance, the only thing that was shining through. Uh, in between all the noise of this big place was just the voice, this super powerful voice that with all that air and all those filters came like and it sounded literally like somebody was sound checking the sink. Nice. Yeah, but it sounded more like, you know, logic track, rivers. Yeah, right, got it. Yeah. Coming to London for their holiday, 
Wow. So yeah, so it's a constant, it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's exchange. Always, yeah, that process. It's just it's always busy, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Make an exchange, yeah. to exchange to uh, yeah. save money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you would say, I, I remember talking to this about you, because you're from, you're, from you're from Milan as well. Yeah, um, Cesar San Giovanni, which is really uh, close to Milan. So, did, so does that make you, does that make you uh, Milan or Inter? AC Milan. Right. Don't okay. offend. Please. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I love Leeds, but please. <laughs> you love Leeds. Leeds, Leeds. Yeah. Um, um, we love you, Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. Leeds, Leeds. I, I saw, um, uh, and now I've seen Milan a few times because I, I used to go. Uh, Do you remember Dida versus yes. Leeds? Yeah, drop it through, <laughs> straight through the legs. Yeah. Fuck. In the rain, I, I was, was there. there. Yeah, he was there. I was there at that game at Alan Road. I was yeah. like. Uh, Oh yeah, no, I think that, that was, um, yeah, Lee Bowyer, our midfielder, hit the shot, and he just, but typical Brazilian goalkeeper, you know, instead of catching it, tapped it down yeah, yeah, to catch it, and it just spammed it. He was it. just arrived, and after one year, he ex literally exploded, <laughs> because after that, he was just arrived, Dida, yeah. was just arrived, and it was like uh, his third match, yeah. AC Milan, so yeah. everyone say he's a shit. <laughs> But after one year, he became the best goalkeeper in the world. Yeah, no, he was good. He was good on his day. At the end, he was good. I, I remember I was at the San Siro and I saw, I think it was, I think it was um, AC against Udinese. And you, I think you, I think you lost 3-2 or something like that. There was, um, and Paluca was in goal for Udinese. Paluca. Yeah. Paluca was a goalkeeper. Yeah, he was in goal for Udinese. No. No? no. Right, then it was it Sampdoria. Was, not Sampdoria? Well, yeah, not Sampdoria. Bologna. It, it might have been Bologna, yeah. Paluca plays in Sampdoria, Bologna, Inter. Yeah. Right. I think yeah, that was. This is clipping all the time. Yeah, it should be okay. It does clip occasionally. Well, I'll tell you what, let's bring it down a bit. Thank you for. Um... This is the sound check. Yeah, and it, 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 do you know what? It's just, um, you know, it's clipping quite, <laughs> clipping quite heavily. Use the sound check. Um, but Paul, you could. Um, I was in with the ultras um, of AC, and then Paul, you could came to keep to keep goal in front because he was lost. Uh, so Udinese was lost. Uh, no, no, no. It wasn't. It was like it, it, Paul, you was in goal. Whoever the team he was playing for, it was against AC. Okay, so obviously he used to be into goalkeeper and he was playing for Bologna or someone like that and he came in the other room. Yeah, and everybody's just like oranges. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, and we had Paluca because because he played for, 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 for Inter, Inter. Yeah, and the uh, the eighteen in the You know where it was that was this this the, the song for Paluca from oh, yeah. AC Milan fans is yeah. Paluca tua mamma c'è lo suca. That literally means that Paluca your mother suck our dicks. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect. It's a perfect rhyme. Yeah. Because Paluca tua mamma is your mother. Yeah. yeah. C'è lo suca. So suck it. <laughs> Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, I've so. spent, spent a lot of time in Milan over the years, and um, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful city. And uh, whenever I was there, it was always the weekend, so it'd be kind of go to San Siro and see whoever's playing, um, which is, you know, just awesome. Um, but getting back to your band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? Why not? <laughs> hey, firstly, it's, you know, it's great to have you back in the UK as well, because I know you, you've only done one gig prior to. Um, well, no, you played it. Play here in London. I'm trying to remember our conversation. In London, but yeah. No. You played, no, you, you did, you've just done that one festival. Yeah, the Tech Metal Festival was uh, Newark. Yes, last Newark. last year. Rock and Roll Newark. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not a lot there. We met some guys from Newark and uh, they, they, they told me uh, that's not a problem, man, if you don't understand us because we never pronounce any T. Yeah. Yeah. And I sounded like, wait, you play this song? What? What, what? What's that? What's that? What element of the four is called what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, yeah well, where I'm from, where, where are these from? They call it, um, uh, they call it water. Oh, water. Yeah, water. Yeah, water. water. It's a glass of water. It's a glass of water. Water, book, look. Wow. Instead of book and look. Uh -huh. So they pronounce the double O as like, as an O. Mm -hmm. So, but, but because, yeah, Book and Luke, 
because that's that's their the, their accent is yeah. And then then the further north you go, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah forget yeah. it. Like Newcastle, Newcastle Geordie is you got a noob noob. What's that? You got a noob noob. So, so you're asking that, if I have a what? That, that that means are you going out now? Oh, uh, you got a noob noob. You got a noob noob. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Which is which is love. Yeah. A, which is love accent. They're awesome. Yeah. That well, the thing so the thing is, it, it's really weird because a, a friend of mine is um, uh, Swedish, and I was telling her about the Geordie accent, and she was going like, "This is really weird." And I was saying a few things. She was like, "And you're doing some doing some research and found out that it's like there's there's parts of Swedish in." The, the way the words are pronounced because of the accent and it's but it's also it's a it's a port so there's always been different nations coming there and you know it's just it's crazy absolutely yeah. crazy and then of course you go up to Scotland and you know none of us can understand what's what's being said of course we can love you Scottish listeners um, <laughs> but uh, yeah it's uh, yeah it's uh, it's uh, a whole other world a whole other world of cuisine as well it um, doesn't sound like you've been getting treated very well nope. food, food wise since oh, you yeah, since you oh. got here. We oh, no, no, no. butter. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're fine with everything, and we love everything coming from everywhere, of course. But we're not such used, a dick. We're not. Used, you're not. You know, it's, it's okay like, to hate it. You know, not, not, not hate it, but you <laughs> just don't use butter. Like, yeah, we, we don't. We have olive oil. That's you that's, don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, somebody does. Well, I don't know. But I think oh, I've heard all about. Actually, that's just reminding me. I've heard all about your cooking. Uh, I've heard all about your cooking. You're a very good cook. No, he is a very good cook. But I cook. Good. But I cook with butter. Oh, <laughs> but, 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 but you want, but you but also, when, I do, when I do, I do with butter. But you also you invite everybody round to your house and you're going to cook for them and then you open the and you open the fridge and there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm remembering. Come into my house. It's, nice. it's like, like we already met. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> Yeah, which pizza is best? Pizza Hut or Domino's? I can't decide. Pizza Hut though. That pizza thing comes after because usually it's like, yeah, let's cook together. And then he opens the fridge and let's call it pizza. (laughs) Maybe a bottle of ketchup and uh, I don't know. (laughs) Nothing else. One egg. (laughs) (laughs) In a motherfucking big fridge. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You get a person in the fridge. So, but, so no, no, about the butter, we, I mean, I think five, six, seven, how many are we? Seven Italians, they didn't know what to do with half a kilo of butter overnight. They, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. We, we, we could put it all our all ourselves and go running in the middle of people make it, that could be awesome. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's have you that, seen the Bronson? That sounds like the Desperate Age way. Yeah, have you, have you I've seen, seen the Bronson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> I spoke to you, I think I remember that you're the only band ever that I've ever spoken to who um, part of your pre tour preparation was um, uh, you were making food. Yeah, we do we do that. If um, if we're gonna stay out for some, then if, if we're able, yeah, we spend some time in the kitchen so we can bring over some. Yeah. Just to feel more homey. Like the, the, the last time we were touring with this very little caravan. Yeah. So uh, the protest they hear at Safety Fire and the contortionists, they were going around with this beautiful, massive, muscle-looking, oh, yeah. black nice yeah. tour bus. Uh, yeah. And we were following yeah. with a super gay, uh, you know, <laughs> white caravan. And they were like, walking around, hey guys, are you going to camping with your granny? And then when they saw we had a kitchen and we were just... I think the best time because right. every, ev- literally every piece of furniture that you could open was stuffed with fruit, fresh veggies, cans, and everything. And we were just <laughs> on the fire, and we were like, ah, "Now we really, really invite." You. And uh, that's it, because like you know, a couple of weeks later, and there I am talking to Rody, and he's going like, uh, "Yeah, those guys are incredible cooks." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, right, okay. So you obviously <laughs> made an impression. We, he, by the way, he was uh, he was really really bummed out that you guys weren't in the UK like that as well. That's great. And we, we, we were talking about it in, in, in the interview, because I was like, well, you know, why, why didn't you bring them with you? Because he was like, no, I missed them. And I was like, well, fuck you, you should have brought them with you. <laughs> we missed them. You kicked them off the tour. That's what happened. And he was like, no, 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 we didn't. And he's like, no, well, it was something to do with agents. And yeah, bookers. yes, absolutely. And no, said, so and, uh, yeah, and it was something to do with agents and bookers. And so this band, and I can't remember who it was. And he said, we had to have this band. And I was like, okay, okay. And, um, and he said, so I was talking to our UK agent. And he was saying, 
so anyway, you know, uh, we had to have this band third on, you know, uh, you know, why was that? And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, them, well, oh that doesn't matter anymore, yeah, they've, um, yeah, they've changed agency, so it doesn't matter now, you, you could have brought... Could have brought Death Rage with you. Yeah, they dropped the agency right after that. Yeah. And they were super pissed because oh. when we met them again, they all came out of the tour bus and they were like, <coughs> <coughs> sneezing and everything. And they were like, those bastards gave us the fires. Everybody's got sick. <laughs> <laughs> we met them again in Paris, I remember. Right, right. And, and they were, all, all of them, they were just down. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, that must have been an incredible tour because I remember talking to you before you went out on it and it was like, that was, you know, for me, I just think that's the perfect tour, you know, because they, 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 there's a, obviously, the protest guys are, their, their fan base is, you know, it's very big, but also, it, they're not straight down the line, mm -hmm. A, B, C, they're yeah, it's, you know, super technical, yeah. and, and that's the arsonist. I agree. Yeah, and the contortionist as well. It was like, so that was an awesome package. When I saw that package, I was like, wow, that's going to be amazing. And then I saw you guys went on it. But anyway, let's not focus on that. How, how was that, that tour? Oh, it was super fun. Super and fun. also very It's okay, you can be honest. Don't worry. I'll make sure Rody doesn't hear it. Because yeah, I know, you know, he was, actually, he was really... Actually, we have nothing to, 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 to complain <laughs> about. I will be totally <laughs> honest and tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the only bad thing was skipping on UK, actually. That, yeah. I was like, eh, we're going to go home, what are we going to do? What, what I, do you know what, I've, I've, been in, I've been in that situation where, where you leave a tour, but the tour carries on without you. And that is, it's like, leave, you know, when a tour finishes, it's always, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you, you make new friends mm -hmm. and things. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a sad time. Yeah, you know, sure. you go home and it takes time to kind of think, well, you know, I'm just... I miss my, my new friends and you know, I miss kind of traveling with those guys and all the rest of it. But when you know that it's carrying on without you. No, but it's, it's what, it was just in the middle. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. we came back. Of course. So. Sorry, yes. No, 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 just no, no, interruption. Was, show, just, uh, we just come back home for one week and then meet them again at Prince Harris. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Right. And then that carried on. Yeah, so you're back home. Yeah, we're yeah. here now for 10 days more. Yeah. Oh, great. If you want to know more about that tour, you can you can see the documentary. Have you seen it? I saw you put one online. I haven't yeah. watched it. Yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You will you will get familiar with that because <laughs> once you start with the first episode, then you're gonna. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you can take pillow not because it uh, it's it's uh, composed by like five minutes uh, episodes. It's in pills. So, right? no, it's in so pills. Three so five minutes. Pillow. Not pillow. Pillow. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's really long. I'm going to fall no, asleep. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, and that's what... Uh, it's called uh, Death Strange, Mamma Mia, not the musical. <laughs> uh, no, I definitely, yeah. No, 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 yeah, I read it. Really, I think I got a press release about it as well. How many yeah. episodes is there? Oh, how many episodes? Ten. It's <clears> nine, <throat> and nine of them were sponsored. But awesome. on the last one, uh, the sponsor just... Uh, you know, left it there. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, on this. Yeah, 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 there's, I there, here, there's no music. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, you got, you got your money anyway, but this is, uh, yeah. Just take it's, our name it's, off. It's really funny, but yeah. post it from your YouTube it's, channel, please. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, about, yeah. it's about a wasabi challenge we were in yeah. Tokyo. <laughs> but you, you will oh, go and see. Oh my god, wasabi challenge? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. I can imagine. Starts, so, starts with eating it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's all sorts of crazy stuff people get up to with that stuff. Yeah. And we're back to cooking again. Now it's wasabi. Um, yeah. So how was Tokyo then? Oh, it oh, was amazing, amazing as usual. Yeah. It was the second time in Tokyo and uh, and Japan, and it's it's a really you 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 really feel you're on the other side of the world. Yeah, in Japan. Well, you well, and also you're a um, you're a minority. Yeah, of course. You know. Yeah, and which is which is a strange feeling for yeah. for most of us. You, you know, it's a completely unique feeling. It's certainly something yeah. I've never I, you know, I've so, experienced. Yeah. Well, yeah. for for instance, something that never happens anywhere else is that we were given an interpreter. So a guy was following us all the time to translate whatever everybody would say because because few people can actually speak English in Japan. Were they yeah. shy about it? Like or, or of course, they, it's normal because you know the idioms are. Cool different so it's not easy at all to speak. Yeah. So yeah we were given One an interpreter and we were like yeah thank you. Yeah, <laughs> was also yeah you've got to do Japan with a with a translator. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So how was the food? The 
food? It's it's food. Food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we love yeah. Japanese food. Is so, sushi, you think fans of sushi? Yeah, no, but it actually, it much sushi, sushi is, uh, is um, it's not Japanese food. I mean, yeah, it's, it's Japanese it's food, but it's not Japanese restaurant. Because the Japanese right. restaurant is, yeah, is yeah, noodle, udon, udon, and eggs yeah, yeah. With, the, with the pork meat. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, this is Japanese we, food. This time we had something really uh, new. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, we were in uh, Osaka. And it was a traditional restaurant with a very low table, and you're supposed to stay on your knees or sitting down, so you're very low. Long table shaped in a U, so everybody is uh, sitting on both sides of this U. Mm-hmm. And then every four or six people, you have this uh, a little electric campfire with a big wok on top. Right. Okay. And the big wok contains uh, actually a helmet of cabbage. Right. Okay. All, all these all these leaves of cabbage are put them like a fucking crop circle. I don't know who <laughs> does that, but they're actually overlapping in a way that then, when the fire starts and the vapor starts to blowing up, yeah, it goes in between the leaves, so it doesn't go away and don't cook them too much. Right. So it's really smart how they do it. Yeah. So when they finally get soft and get into the soup, you put your Big spoon into the soup. Oh no, 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 no. A woman does it. Yeah. Ah. Is that traditional? Yeah. And and then uh, it, it, it. and the bottom is full with uh, meat, but like uh, organs. How do you call that? Oh yeah, intestines. Uh, yeah. like awful. Mm. Yeah, we call it awful. Awful. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. This is not a confused. Right. Awful. Right. It would be horrible. Horrible. Awful. Off. Yeah. Off. So like switch off. on and off. Off. Awful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. So that's what that's yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's what that would be. So yeah, lungs, kidneys, yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and that was really good and also light. If you think about the the, the 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 content of it, it was light because we have something like that. It's a traditional plate from Milano and um, hinterland that is called cassola, and it has yeah. pretty much same ingredients, but it has to cook for eight hours and it becomes horribly. <laughs> Uh, heavy, right? Yeah, but yeah, but these people just found a way to cook it perfectly in twenty minutes with this cabbage overlapping, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so it's it's steam itself without right. you have to add any cover to the, to the right. Yeah, but okay. Okay. it's really no, that's amazing. Yeah. Love that. That's amazing. And how are the shows while you're around? Oh, the shows amazing! Were great, yeah, great. Because the Japanese audience, the the, the reaction is. Different. It, it's different, but it can be really random. Like uh, the first time we were going, they told us, guys, don't feel bad if uh, these people w- will not move much, will not sweat much, because that's the, the way they usually do. But they were, mm, how do you say that, um, crowd surfing all the time. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter. They were making a lot, a lot, a lot of noise, and they were sweating a lot, and they were, yeah, singing all the songs with all the words. And then they, <laughs> suddenly becomes quiet all of a sudden when the when the concert ends. Ah uh, right. Yeah, and the, and the and the people go away in like five minutes or ten oh, minutes right. after the concert. Super concerts. organized. Yeah. yeah. Super organized. Like. Uh, good night. <laughs> wow. So yeah. It's like. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like here where they like just try trying to get rid of you and it's, it's like same. drink your drink, get out. Same in Italy, they start with the bell and then like in five minutes we're closing and then together the people it takes two yeah. hours. No, no, yeah. no, 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 they just boom, ready to work for the morning after. But uh, yeah, of course the brave they will stay to meet yeah. you, to talk to you. Uh, to, yeah. yeah. And and one thing I wanted to ask you about as well was um, what's the scene? What uh, what's the scene like in Italy? And are you uh, or are you part of a scene or are you kind of? You know, pretty much out there on your own. Well, uh, in September we will do massive summer festivals with pop stars. Right. Okay. So it's not really we're belonging to scene. I don't even know. Italy is very diverse. I don't know if there's yeah. a particular scene. Yeah, maybe the stoner scene is pretty much staying together. It's sort the of the rit- rit- reading Nietzsche in Italy. Okay, right. when you can find uh, hip hop stars and rock stars and metal yeah. acts and uh, everything, so right. music, and right. you know we are the, the metal, yeah, yeah. the metal side, yeah, the, the metal <laughs> yeah, right, okay. So, but <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course, yeah. So, so but when you're touring, um, you know, if you've got like 
Italian compatriots that you can take out with you who are, you know, I could kind of liken it uh, a sort of Italian protester hero or, or anything like that? Is it, or, or are you pretty much, if you go out on the road, you've got to take kind of, you know, whoever's around or just play well, local it's, bands? It's not really a decision that we can take. Right, okay. So no. you're asking if we could? Um, well, no, kind of who you end up on bills with. So if your agent is putting a tour together. Oh, uh, this is this is really um, strange and uh, not common because uh, since a couple of years we're mostly doing headliners in right. Italy all the time. Okay, all the time. And uh, we know this is not what happens usually, but yeah, we cannot even. But it's super important band. Yeah. Portare band con noi. No, if you mean, you mean to bring, bring up with us uh, other bands uh, in well, you, your, Italy? Your support bands, as in, so if you, if, I mean, do you, if we choose support bands or the kind of bands that you end up with? Like, no, not, they, not, you know, not, not sometimes we can do it, uh, but uh, it's most of the rare. time it's, it's really rare. Yeah. Right. Okay. It happens one out of ten times. Right. But we can actually pick. Them. But we can suggest, you know, just yeah. push them. But is, it, but is it usually kind of local bands that you would end up with? Yeah, usually right. a rocking band. And so we try to, when, you know, bands write us to uh, play with us, where we just made, okay, we just lend them to the to our tour manager. Yes. So yeah. he can make, if they are good, actually good, <laughs> they can um, uh, can put in our gigs in their area. Yeah. So if if they especially because if the owner the, of the place um, can't pay any more fee, yeah, uh, at least they have no a big travel to do. Yeah. So they are all already in the area. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Um, and so you guys are, are pretty much a headline act. You've built that, you know, slowly over the last few years. Yeah. Did did the new album push you that? You know, push you further? Uh, we will say a lot. There was a big gap. Uh, since let's say the last date of the tour of the previous album yeah. and the release party of this new album uh, there was a six months gap and when we came back on the stage people were twice as much wow yeah wow. Uh, we did this amazing uh, release party and was it was it last March we have been pretty careful Thanks. on uh, choosing the place, we could do it in this venue or that venue and uh, you don't really know what to expect. Yeah, we're thinking a little bit more people will come due to the new uh, release, but we couldn't expect that many. And in fact, 200, 200, 300 people were left outside. So it was wow. sold out with a lot of people outside. And some of them were coming with buses from quite far away yeah. in Italy. And uh, we really didn't expect that. That's amazing, yeah. And and that was just just from having six months off. Six so months off is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then people get hungry and uh, they, they, they want to see you back. And the new release was uh, impressing uh, many people and the media as we're talking good about it. We got yeah. good reviews. Thanks to you also. <laughs> no problem, dude. Yeah. And thank, thank you. Thank you for releasing such an awesome album. Um, I mean, it's it, when you when you did it. Did you have a feeling amongst yourselves when you heard that finished product? And you think this is this is this is special. This is kind of I don't know if this is special, but for sure this is what we we're, we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you kind of you you don't want to kind of put any expectations on no, because if you're if you're doing a thing, you never okay. It's special because it's your thing. Yeah, well, that's, you, you you can't say uh, you, 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 you did it, so it's not so so special for your year, and especially yeah. after a month of tracking and uh, writing sessions and uh, rehearsal. So uh, you arrive at the point that you say, okay, this is not special. This is just a like a big pre chorus uh, bridge, a uh, chorus, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But anyway, we I think we we really satisfied about the reason. Yeah, I, well, yeah, because I, I think um, I think what you, uh, I mean, maybe like, we'll kind of wind up now because I think um, with this guy coming behind us, this is not a sound check, this is somebody started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we'll, um, we'll not, uh, but I think um, 
you know, you went down from my top five albums of the year. I think one of the reasons for that was a the originality, um, uh, b the just the overall quality, uh, but also the fact that everything comes with it. It's like there's there's uh, there's there's no weak point. You see the videos. The videos are be beautifully done, brilliantly delivered. You see acoustic versions of songs. It's excellent, and, and I think you, what you what you managed to create was um, it's kind of like a work of art, you know, as opposed to just a, an album. Yeah, you know, it was something that just everything from the artwork, you know, to just the whole the title, which is just great, absolutely great. And yeah, exactly. It's it's, it's funny. It's great that you know it's a band with a sense of humour as well, which makes nice fucking change in the world of metal. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was awesome. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to hearing some new stuff. Um, and, um, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to arrive just as you, um, just as you fixed that chord progression. All right. <laughs> we will change it anyway. Yeah. 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 We have no idea how many times we change our mind on a song, or even on a small section. Like, that's why it takes so long to write our stuff. We were not, not happy. Yeah, but that's great because like the minute you're happy is the minute you're lazy, and the minute you're just you know someone else comes past you know right. it takes you. A, it, it, I, yeah, I, I was listening to a, a, a D Schneider from Twisted Sister. Mm -hmm. He does a podcast, mm -hmm. and he was saying that after Stay Hungry, and they'd done these sold these millions of albums. He said there he was sat next to his swimming pool with a massive fucking house and seven cars and two boats, trying to write the next album. He was like, I couldn't. <laughs> At I least was, it was. I was happy. Yeah. You know, you know, I was just like the, the drive, the you know, it's just it, it was gone. I I'd achieved everything I'd ever wanted to achieve. You know, it's amazing. Such kind of honesty. I'm really impressed. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. why we are on the side of on the do or not to do the new album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, in the pool. I've, uh, yeah, no. I, 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 I guys, I, I want to oh. see some. I want to see some death rage. Um, Pasta sauces. Pasta sauces. Yes, yes. We, we were asked pasta yesterday. Sauces. We yeah. were asked yesterday. Like many Italian bands are doing uh, their own uh, <laughs> homemade um, like flesh cut apocalypse, apocalypse, you know, flesh, flesh cut apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. they're great friend of us. You got anthrax uh, bourbon. Yeah, yeah. bourbon. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who made barbecue <laughs> sausage? Oh, uh, well, that's, that's very big from uh, That's going to be Billy Paul as well, isn't it? Barbecue. The bar yeah. Barbecue, they do, uh, the, quite few people do that. The Billy most Paul. selling one is Aerosmith. Uh, yeah, Perry. Perry. Perry's is the most selling barbecue. Oh, Joe Perry's. Yeah, Joe Perry's. Yeah. In, uh, in America. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but although, yeah. although Paul Newman does a does a if, whilst we're talking we about celebrity barbecue sauce, <laughs> Paul Newman's barbecue <laughs> sauce is it's it's really like really barbecue <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. It looks like a reality. Hey, there's your, there's your next album title for you right there. Celebrity Barbecue Sauce. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about it is that to make a great piece of um, merchandise and food uh, is that it has to be durable. Yeah, and you've got to be able to take it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, you can't refrigerate it. And you, yeah. Italians are not big in that. Not no, because it's, 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 fresh. Fresh. it's all fresh. Usually, yeah, you, you cook something and you serve it. Uh, but maybe we can do, we can ice them. <laughs> <laughs> we can ice them. <laughs> well, look, you know, let's let us look into it, okay? And I was going to bring you some mushy peas, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, the only version I could have brought, brought you, basic mushy peas. Are you familiar with mushy peas? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, right. Spoken so Paolo is looking at me like uh, he does know it. Right, this is it's basically mushy peas, uh, uh, something that's made um, in Yorkshire where I'm from. So Leeds fans eat mushy peas. Ah. So what they are, it's, it's peas, it's yeah. peas, green peas. Uh, uh, you can you can uh, you can um, you, bur uh, you you buy it uh, at uh, White Hart Lane. No, it's not White Hart Lane. Allen Road. Allen Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so what are you do? White Hart Lane. It's so, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So they're um, so they're dried they're dried peas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're dried. Okay. Uh -huh. So they've got no moisture in, and you soak them overnight in water and bicarbonate of soda. Carbonate of soda, right? So, and they soak overnight, mm -hmm. and and then you cook them, and they they basically like become a paste. 
Yeah. All right, okay. Rather, so the, so the only thing, the way of telling it was peas is that it's green. But other than that, it's just like a, it's, yeah, it's like a, it's like a, just a, well, hence mushy. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just kind of like a mush. They mushy. taste amazing. They're absolutely, and I would have brought you some, but the only type I could find is in the can that I could give you, and that's horrible. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll wait till the next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the next time, okay? It's yeah. like Newark. When you were in Newark, you could have probably got some uh, mushy peas near there. But I'm, I'm determined that, you, that I'm going to get you to try them one day. Newark, I remember the day after we had an amazing uh, yeah, classic English know. breakfast from a farm that was just there. Oh, and they were my. growing their own chi um, yeah, chickens and yeah. fresh meat eggs and everything. Even the bacon was coming from them. So you, and, so you had a you had a farmhouse English right, breakfast. Farmhouse, farmhouse English breakfast. All cooked. I, I couldn't really have this black pudding. That's stronger than me. I guess. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but is that because of the taste or because of you know how it's made? I had no idea about how it's made, but as soon as I tried it, I was like, yeah, it's something I don't like. Oh no, that's fine. If you tried it, that's that, that's cool. No, I th I thought you were kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna. Eat no, 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 no. I always try everything. Oh, and, cool. uh, and, and then after that I was like, oh, I think this is blood because I know that my granny does something similar but right. uh, sometimes in Italy all people do like use the blood of the pork to do sweets. Right. Okay. So do, do, do you know uh, do you know Nutella for instance? Yeah. So my granny used to do sometimes when this blood was coming her own so hot in now made Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she was mixing it with uh, dark chocolate for instance and then mm, yeah, if you think about it, it's, yeah. it, it instead right. of the palm oil, you just use this very rich animal green. Right, yeah. It is by itself very close to chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, could, we get beetroot and chocolate as well. Like chocolate and beetroot cake. Yeah. That's fucking bizarre. Anyway, look, it's, it's getting hot in here. Yeah. So yeah. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Let's not do the next line. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna now go, go home, sort all this stuff out, and then I'm gonna come back and cool. see the show tonight. We're on stage at ten. I know. Really looking forward Good to seeing you. Thank you. Really for, looking thank forward you so much. To Not at all, man. Your support. Thank uh, you. uh, it's, it's absolute pleasure, and you know, look, one day, yes, one day we'll always, thank you. One day, my band, we play with your band. We can, we can branch out with thrash metal. So it's like we'll bring the old school thrashers, we'll bring your new your new school fans, we'll have a nice mashup. Absolutely. Um, and if we can get if we can get you over here for a few days, that'd be yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome for sure. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you very thank much you. once again. Thanks, Paolo. Thanks, my Thanks. Great. See you, ciao. So what a couple of lovely guys, and how awesome was that that Paolo knew the song Marching All Together, the Leeds United song. That is just fucking legendary. I am so chuffed with that. Um, the show was awesome. Uh, picked up a picked up a shirt as well, and um, and after the show, I got a chance to just uh, briefly have a chat with uh, Matteo and. Um, he was over the moon with the response to the audience. He was just, yeah, he was really happy. And um, it was just a, a cool day in general. I had a, such a brilliant time. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great show. Fucking great show. Um, and, um, yeah, that kind, of, uh, that kind of brings us towards the end of the show. Um, and um, I like the show, the podcast. Doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't seem right calling it a show. Um, does it really? I mean, I don't know. Anyway, um, but one last thing was um, the um, there's been a lot of noise about the Mayhem Festival in the States, um, which uh, basically um, Slayer were headlining. It's quite clearly not done particularly well. Um, uh, Kerry King has been quite outspoken to the bill not being good enough. Um, and then again, um, the guy who runs it hasn't done himself any favours. I quote, um, he generated controversy earlier in the summer after and uh, this is a guy called Kevin Lyman. Uh, Lyman blamed the event's low ticket sales and the fact that metal has failed to produce new and younger headlining bands, adding that metal got grey, bald and fat and chased girls away. Right. OK. Well, um, A... Uh, Kerry King, you know, absolutely spot on when he said the guy was a fucking idiot and, um, you know, just like, what the fuck was he doing? Ruining his own business, absolutely, and taking down everyone else's business as well. But 
Mr. Kevin Lyman has a little bit of history on this podcast. Yeah, this is the same fucking cunt who said that um, Pantera should get back because the fans deserve it. Eh? Yeah, all the all these people who've been doing all this really hard work to get Pantera back together. Yeah, fans deserve fuck fucking bollocks. No one fucking deserves shit in his life without a hell of a lot of hard work being put in first. And I'm sorry, but it was quite clearly, as I said at the time, it was quite clearly an attempt by a guy who basically just wanted to put Pantera on because he knew he'd make a shitload of fucking cash. And he, reveal, and he reveals his true colours this month. What a fucking dick. And I'm not going to say any more on the subject because he is a massive fucking dick. I don't want to give that massive dick any more publicity. Publicity, is it really? On this podcast, does, <laughs> I, I don't think any of us do the publicity thing, do we? I mean, it does seem to be a quite a closed uh, clo- closed shop, um, talking bollocks. It's like, bollockers know who they are, and they know other bollockers, but that's it. We keep it, we keep it tight, we keep it real! Um... And that leads me on to say thank you very much. Thank you very much to all of you um, that constantly listen, subscribe, spread the word. Um, please, as I've told you before, please go into uh, go into friends podcast apps, add Talking Bollocks, get them in, get them involved, spread the word, spread the love. When you're at a live gig, somebody shout bollocks, somebody shout bollocks back, and somebody shout Talking Bollocks. That would be fucking great if you could do that. Purely for my ego, no other reason whatsoever. Um, I think we've established that, uh, you know, that's pretty much the whole point of the podcast. My fucking ego. Um, But fuck, you actually seem to enjoy this shit, so, you know, why not? Um, uh, What else was I going to say? Well, yeah, um, yeah, look, just thank you. Thank you to all. Oh, I nearly forgot. I nearly forgot. Cunt of the month. Haven't pronounced, um, uh, haven't pronounced cunt of the month yet. Um, well, there was, um, yeah, I, I wasn't quite, I wasn't quite sure, um, uh, which, whether to go with, um, uh, Bill Fatty Ward and his constant fucking hippiedom, um, or Paul Stanley for, um, for calling Dee Schneider a wannabe and Twisted Sister a bunch of buffoons. Um, or that fucking dick, Kevin Lyman, for just being a fucking dick. Um, and it, it was it was a bit of a tie, but then finally what did it for me was Kevin Lyman, not worth it. Um, Bill Ward might be being a dick, but at least he was in Sabbath. Um, at least he's responsible for something good in this world. Um, and then there's Paul Stanley, who's just a massive fucking dick. So, cunt of the month for September 2015. Congratulations, Paul Stanley. Your um, your uh, your your bronze statue of a month of cunts is on its way in the post to you, um, and uh, and hopefully um, you'll choke on it. Why? Why? What the fuck? What would he try? Why would somebody try and eat? A, uh, a bronze made of what would appear to be small vaginas. I don't know. I haven't really thought this through <laughs> like anything else. Um, uh, yeah, well, utter bollocks. Look, uh, moving swiftly on, um, it's, it's just fucking really appreciated. Everybody that gets involved with Talking Bollocks, all of you out there that listen, I really do appreciate it. Um, there's some great specials coming up. Really fucking hope you enjoy them. Um, the, the Acid Rain with Pete, the Acid Rain one with Pete coming up very soon. The Writer's Special coming up very soon. The Metallica Black Album special. Not quite sure when that's going to make it because I'm still trying to nail a date down for that. The book comes out um, in a week or so. Um, there's going to be old school, new school. I'm not going to say who the old school is yet because the interview's not in the can, but it is due to happen um, on Tuesday next week, so just a couple of days from now. That is looking like it's going to happen. Um, and yeah, just lots of exciting stuff coming up. So please do all check out acidrain.co.uk. Please check out Planet of the Damned, the new song. Um, come and see us on the road if you can. All dates, everything, it's all at um, acidrain.co.uk. Come and join um, Talking Bollocks on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, it's Everything is everywhere. You know, you can follow me as Keith Platt on Facebook. You can follow uh, Keith Platt on Twitter. Come on, guys. Um, you know, join the party or don't. You know, or don't. If you fucking hate social networks and all that shit, fair play to you. Fine. Don't want to be involved with that? Fine. Just want to listen to the podcast. 
podcast, fine. Absolutely, totally get it. Not a problem. So, I mean, you know, you don't have to interact with everything, do you? I mean, fucking everything's supposed to be interactive at the moment. It's like, oh, you know, oh, we just went to interact. Or, what do you think? Is there anything fucking worse than than watching the news and say, or, or listening to the news on the radio or something like that? And they say, we'd love to get your opinions. And you just think, no! No! Not fucking dickhead's opinions, no! Not the general public's opinions, please don't do that. Oh, I think homeless people should be chopped up and set on fire, or possibly used as kidney donors and other donor parts, just because they ain't got a house, they should be fucking ruined. And you just get all these fucking knobheads going. Yeah, no, I don't want their opinion. I want I want informed opinion. I want experts. I don't want to listen to just dicks. It's like it's like when you look on Blabbermouth or any other of those sites. You get the interview and you think you read the interview and that whoever it's with, and you think, yeah, that's quite informing. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, all right, yeah, that was interesting. And then if you want to know what your average fucking brainless turd thinks, you read the comments, and when you read that, you just think, fucking hell, 90% of humanity needs exterminating soon. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, none of that is you guys. You're all fucking cool as hell. Yeah, yeah, and it's not you. And even if you do comment on Blabbermouth, I bet they're sound, well-observed, intelligent comments. Um, anyway, I'm babbling. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm finishing off with um, with a tune uh, by a band who um, some of you um, have told me you've got into since her hearing on... Um, hearing me go on about them uh, at the beginning of the year it is soil work it's the follow-up to the absolutely fantabulous um uh the divine infinite which is a fantastic double album this is from the new album uh, the ride majestic and this um is the last bit of the podcast so see you next month guys we'll see you soon with some specials which are coming your way very quickly um and this is death in general by soil work from the ride majestic there you go that's why i'm not a dj because i just made a complete fucking hash of that didn't i so finishing up with soil work and death in general Your name that night that-